Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. So what kind of food are you getting right now, man? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, you got to stay away from that, man. You got to stay away from that McDonald's. Don't... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So quick question, man, before we get the process started, uh, typically before I start getting into the condition and things like that, let me ask you this. Uh, are you the only decision maker on the property? Just want to make sure, Alex, I don't step on nobody else's toes because if somebody else is a decision maker, I just want to make sure I give them the proper respect. Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure of that. So this property right here on Oak Ford, uh, what could you tell me about it? Can you tell me a little bit about the condition, the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, things of that nature? Well, the way it is right now, it would have to be a tear down. Oh, wow. And, uh, build something, hard to build something new there. Okay. Um, okay. That, that would, that would, you know, straight out, that's what I would do. Okay, okay, you would tear it down. And let me ask you this, what makes you think you have to tear the property down? I'm just curious about that. So let me ask you this, man, and I'm just curious about it. Uh, like I said, you have spoke to my partner, Shari, about this property. And the question that I actually asked her, uh, I am one of the finance managers in the finance department. So uh, your file actually just got on my desk. So I just wanted to make sure that I personally gave you a call. I just wanted to figure out a couple yeah. more things about the property. So you say that the property actually needs to be knocked down. Let me ask you this. If we were to put enough funds into the property, do you think it's a way that we could save that property? Or have you got some quotes just in case you wanted to renovate it yourself? Have you thought about doing that? Uh, if I wanted to renovate it, I would probably spend, uh, I don't know, between 70 and 100. Okay. I would spend, but in the area, a nice size house there, uh, because recently, right. across the street, I think one sold for close to 300. Okay. And which yeah. property was that? Cause Exactly. And, and, and you know what? I'm actually looking at a couple properties right here myself. Are you familiar with uh, Fall Gate uh, Court in uh, Fairfield War, uh, Away? I'm sorry about that. Fairfield Away? Fairfield yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'm actually looking at a property right here and it was, it looked like it was totally renovated. Uh, this one actually sold for around like 218 and uh, I see one on Fall Gate that sold for 230 And I know you said that your property needs uh, practically to be, need to be tore down right now. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, if we were to tear the property down and we were to build a whole new property, how much how much funds do you think that would take? I'm just curious about that. What you think in your opinion? Um, I th well, it only depends too. If you get a if you get a greedy contractor to get it done, you know, he would he would probably tell you two hundred, but Right, right. I know that you can put a you can easily put a one level property there with like around thirteen hundred square feet. I got you. For, you know, like I said, between 80, 100,000 dollars, 70, yeah. So, depending on what you want to put in it, I mean, if you want to spend things right in it, I, I want to make sure. You know, I mean? I'm, you know, it's two thousand twenty right now. I just want to make sure that I bring the property up to two thousand twenty standards. And my question is yeah. this, uh, Alex. It seems like that you know uh, you really don't want to put any more work to the property. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but let me ask you this. Uh, I understand that the property needs a full renovation, but what would you say is one of the reasons that you're looking to sell this property and not actually fix it up? What would you say? Um, one of the reasons is because of the uh, funds. If I had the funds to, to get it done, I would get it done. I would have no problem. Okay, so if you had the funds to if you had the funds to get it done, you said you'd definitely do so. Is that correct? Yes, I would definitely do it. Okay, but let me ask you this. 
I got you. So considering that, you know, we do have the funds on hand right now, if I was able, you know, to pay cash, uh, buy the property in as is condition, and I can get the property off your hands and move as quickly as possible. And uh, I'm pretty much moving your timeline. So you just let me know exactly when you would like to close up. Let me ask you this, man, if I was able to get this property away from you, I mean, how would that make you feel? And what would that do for you right now? Uh, one, uh, one thing would be to uh, clear up uh, a lead that we have, we have on it. Okay. And they probably just take care of the taxes, and then that would open up for me to maybe apply for a loan. Okay. Kind of, that's just the appearance. Okay. That's why we try to put a loan in appearance. Right, right. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm very... I don't even know why, because it was, uh, it, I don't even know why, because it was part of money, but, you know, it appeared, and then that's why... I'm very, I'm, I'm extremely confident. Uh, like I said, man, I'm very familiar with this area over here. Uh, one of my partners, he actually purchased a property on Four Gate probably about two years ago. Uh, he built properties as well as myself. Uh, considering that we would have to put at least 200000 to the property, and that's not even including us having to tear it down and do the demolition project and everything like that. Considering the work that we have to put into it, uh, if I was able to close it up in uh, 10 to 14 business days, we buy it in as is condition. You never have to worry about the property anymore. I mean, what do you think is the absolute best you could do on it if I could move pretty quickly on it right now for you? Uh, look, if you really want to buy it, I can let it go for free. I know that's going to take care of uh, the $25,000 lien and pay those taxes. Right. And I know I probably walk away with like, uh, so uh, and I want you to keep in mind, man, you know, we are buying in as this condition. Uh, we're going to take care of the closing costs. I want to kind of bring you into my world for a moment. I got to purchase the property. Uh, I got to pay closing costs. Of course, we're paying cash for it. Good, good, you know, good God that we do have cash and we're not dealing with any hard money lenders right now because they backing out on a lot of people at this very moment. So the good thing is I can pay cash for the property and uh, we can absolutely move as quick as you need to move. So I do want to let you know that. But I will say this. Uh, like I said, I'm no rookie to the area. I'm definitely familiar with the area. I know that you want to walk away with some funds because it's not that you just want to walk away, but you deserve to walk away with something because you did purchase the property. I'm sure you want some type of return. But my question is. Uh, and, I, and I still have to, my partner is actually in the finance department right now. His name is Lenny. He's actually one of the finance managers. If I was, you know, able to take this to him, and I already know what he's going to say because he's going to tell me about the demolition project. Is that 40000 if we could move on in the next 10 days and possibly less, is that the absolute best you can do considering all the things that we're going to be paying on the property? Hey, look, you already know what I mean, right? <laughs> I already know what I mean, right? Listen, I'm, I'm not trying to, I, I just want to make sure that. Give me one second. No problem, no problem. Take your time, take your time. No problem. Say, if I gave you at uh, 40 grand, I would probably be walking away with 11, 11 500, and that would be after that lady stayed off and maybe the taxes stayed off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I tell you what, if I walk away with 10 grand right now, I, I will be okay. So, so okay, so if, if you walk away with 10 grand right now, uh, we, we absolutely can get the process started today. Would you say that? Because I know if I take it back to the finance department, you know, these guys going to want to secure the funds for you. Uh, I still have to get the funds approved real quick. And I could just place you on a brief hold for like a minute real quick. If I can place you on a brief hold real quick and I can see if I can get that. Uh, and how much is that? I know you said that. How much do you own the property again? Uh, 25000 uh, 25, is for the needs that we have. Initially, it was 50000 but we only used 25000 I got you. I told you we would be paid for 25000 And then the taxes, I'm thinking, somewhere between uh, twenty eight dollars or $3,000, whatever the taxes are. Okay, okay. I think that would put me at, at least ten grand. So I got you. I got you. If I walk away with ten grand, I, I should be okay. Okay, with ten grand. So, so let me ask you this. Can I place you on a brief hold real quick? 
Uh, can you give me like uh, about a minute or two? I just want to go to the finance department and I want to see if we can absolutely do this uh, 35 grand for you. And uh, I want you to keep in mind that we will cover the closing costs and everything like that because I don't want you to come out of pocket for anything. But for any reason, if I could get that approved for you, uh, would you be ready to get the process started today? Okay, okay. Uh, what's a good email for you? Uh, in the meantime, while I'm walking into the finance department, I would love to send you over our company commitment. It's going to tell you a little bit more about our company and the service that we provide. Uh, I want to see that real quick. That way you can look over that while I'm in the finance department, see if I can get those funds approved. Uh, what's a good email for you right now? Uh, it's, um, it's, it's being, this is the only email that I use. Hey, man, I'm not judging anybody. Yeah, I just get a lot of junk in there, you know what I mean? Like, totally understand. I, I would check it. Yeah, it's, it's BS and Boy and uh, Snancy, ES Edward, Remodeling, ISC, at gmail.com. So I got, re I got, I got BNE, I got Remodeling, and I got Inc. at gmail.com. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, give me one second. So uh, can you pull that email up real quick? I'm gonna make sure I get this over to you before I walk into the finance department real quick. Can you pull that up for me? Yes, sir, just take your time and I'm here with you right now. Key. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Um, it was like yeah. new builds are selling for 280,000. Uh, oh. I can't find any vacant lots that have sold in this area. I think it's a unique property. So what you guys think, man? What you guys think? Give me one second. I'm actually... Is that John or uh, talk to me one more time. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Is that John or four brothers? Is that what it is? No, I got, I got Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give me one second. I want to, I want to make sure that this sends over to you. Can you give me one second? Yeah. All right. One second. So yeah. So what, what's that? There's one new bill that's sold right next to it for 287,000. 35 so, can't be that bad. Chris, you know better than anybody. What you think, Chris? What you thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Lock it up. What's the address? I'm gonna look it up for y'all real quick. The address is, give me, on, one second, bro. Give, me, one give me one second, Alex. I'm actually in the finance department right here. I'm actually talking to my guy, Chris, as well. Give me one second, all right? Okay. One second. Okay. So the address, the address is 5627 uh, Oak Fort Road. I'm going to put it on the screen right here. All right. Is it it's a good qualified lead right here. Yeah, that's a good lead for sure. Capital Heights. Hey, Alex, hey, Alex, did you pull up that email real quick? I'm actually sending you over this company commitment real quick. Did you pull that up for me? All right, give me one second because I started driving already. No problem. Take your time, man. Take your time. Did you get a chance to get that McDonald's, man? You get everything situated? Uh, man, you can't be working that hard without eating, man. You're going you're gonna to have other problems then. Okay. Yes, sir. Give, give, me, give me one second, man. Give, give me one second. I'm actually getting ready to send this over to you. Can you give me about 30 seconds real quick? One second. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm using Blue Book real quick. Yep. Uh, for you guys that don't know, uh, PropStream has a really awesome app built within it that allows you to kind of Figure out what it's going to cost to new, build a new property. This house that I'm looking at uh, sold for 287000 It's 1,056 square feet. It's a four-bedroom, three-bath. It has a huge lot. I don't know if our lot's the same, and it's out on the market for 58 days. It sold last month for three, uh, on 3-26-2020. And if I, if I calculate the cost to build, even on the high end at $95 a square foot, and we multiply that by, uh, let's say, uh, it's a thousand square feet, so we're going to build a thousand square foot property that's going to come out to ninety five thousand and some change, four hundred and seventy five, right? And then the cost to acquire, how much is he asking right now to buy and close? Thirty five, thirty five, thirty five. We're all in at one hundred and thirty, and then you could resell at two eighty. I think you got a deal, bro. I say bag. Yeah, lock it up. It's going to cost more than that to build it, but lock mm -hmm. it up. 
The only mm-hmm. problem is you can't I can't see nothing about a lot of the zoning right now, but I mean you can lock it up with a contingency and rock yeah. and roll. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got the email pulled on up? Um <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You didn't get it? Let me see. Give me one second. Let me make sure everything is correct on my hand. And it's coming from Hometown Cash Buyers. And it's our uh, company commitment. Uh, see, if you, see if you received it. I actually just sent it over again just now. And it's coming from Hometown Cash Buyers. If you can pull that up real quick. I want to speak to my finance uh, partners. Okay, you just received it? So if you could take a look at that for a very quick moment, I want to see if I can get this 35000 approved along with the closing costs. Uh, let me see if I can get that approved. If we can get that approved, uh, I come back on, I see your one-page agreement, and that way we can get the process started, and uh, we, can get, we can get ready to take the property off your hands. So just give me about one minute, okay? All right. All right, no problem. Hey, y'all, I need somebody to give me a Maryland title company. I need a title company in Maryland real quick. I'll get one for you. Hold on. Yes, sir. <laughs> God damn it, Keith. I need the Maryland Title Company. Let's go, man. All right. Uh, Keith had to go first. This, you know, I, I don't think this was fair. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And then, listen, you don't want it to be too long. Then you got to get back on the phone and ask him if it's the right number. Hey, Alex, you still there? Hey, quick question. Uh, I'm actually still speaking to the guys right now. Is this the best phone number for you? I want to make sure that we got the best contact number for you. Is this correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Give me one second while I get this approved. Give me one second. All right. ATG I, title. What is it? ATG title. Let me Google it real quick. AT, ATE title. Yeah. And then I got another one. That's in Bethesda. It's another one, uh, Quantum Title Two. Okay, I'm gonna do ATE. ATG. ATG. Yeah. All right. Use that Quantum Title one, man. It's got better reviews and shit. Okay, how you spell that? How you spell that? Q U A N T U M. In case my in case my dog look it up, man. Yeah. It's always important. So that's how. Okay. Uh, they ain't got no emails or nothing. Uh, nah, you need an email to send it to him. You what about phone numbers? Just give me a phone number. Yeah, uh, 301. Yep. 770. Yep. 3254. 3254. All right. Active. We, we'll worry about that later. Shit. We just need hey, one. Twan, Twan, my, my, my got Twan in here. Twan, if you know an email for Quantum, uh, drop it in here. If not, it's all right. But. Yeah. Let me be looking at my leaves either, man. Let me be looking at my leaves either, man. Hey, Keith, they say you tight one finger at a time like a cat from the hood. Hey, I'm a hustler, man. I'm a hustler. I'm a hustler. So long as I got my man. Hey, give me one second. Hey, Alex, you still there? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, one quick thing, man. One of the things that uh, one of my finance partners, they did ask is, uh, how quick would you like to get this done? Because they want to make sure that they're able to get it done in a timely manner for you. How quick would you be able to get this thing done, man? Or how quick would you want to get it done? You guys tell me. We can do it right now if you want. Man, you speak in my language, man. You speak in my language. If you can at least do this. If you can give us 10 business days, that way I can get the title search completed uh, very quickly. If we can get that completed, and I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm going to be 100% transparent because you've been that way with me. Uh, my partners, they really want to be anywhere from twenty to 30000 because they understand that we do have to demo the property. But they did say if we could do 35000 and we could take care of closing and we can get the process started today, then we can absolutely get this done for you. Do you think we can make that happen? At 35000 and we take care of the closing costs. And then uh, I got to pay that lien. Yes, sir. You'll pay the lien and we'll cut you a check for $10,000 at the closing table. How much, how much do you owe in taxes right now? Only one year. Oh, man. Yeah, man. We can work that out, man. I'm not worried about that. Uh, if, how much do you think the taxes are going to be? Because that may be something we can work out. How much do you think it may be? Between 
2,800. Man, that's 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 a nice that's a nice that's a nice bit. Let's do this, man. Is it any way that we can give you at least a thousand dollars on those taxes? Uh, typically, we don't like we don't pay the taxes, but uh, we understand that it's a lot going on right now. I mean, can I give you a thousand dollars towards those taxes, and we can make it happen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you feel about that? Mm. I don't know. I mean, I, I already thought this a lot. You know what I mean? So, so, so quick, so quick thing, man. Quick thing, because like I said, I, I won't want nothing like this. We taxes to keep us from getting this done today. Uh, I mean, I can go back into, uh, you know, the finance department and speak to my partner, Chris, real quick and Lenny. Uh, I can ask those guys and see if we can make it happen with those taxes. But I will say this. I know if we do take care of those taxes, these guys are going to be ready to get it started today. So if I can get these guys to cover that, do you think we're able to get the process started? I just want to make sure, man. I don't want to waste these guys' time, just like I don't want to waste your time. If I was able to get that 2800 approved with those taxes, that would take the purchase price up from 35000 to 378. If I can get that done, do you think we can go on and get it started? Okay. All right, give me one second real quick. Let me see if I can get this approved for you. Give me a second. We got enough room in there, man. It's enough Let's room. Let's go, there. man. Let's enough room go. in there, Chris. Chris, you know there's enough room. Let's go. Lock it up, man. Let's see. 30 Let's seconds. get it, man. Yo, for real though, I want to be in this finance department. <laughs> Lock them up, man. We gonna we gonna walk. We can walk them back down the line later, man. Yeah, we're walking down later, man. We good right now. Thirty seven three. Damn. All right, Alex. So so quick thing, Alex, man. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to be a hassle to you. I want to get this done, especially during this time right now. Let's just do the 37.8. That way you can walk away with a full 10 grand. Let's go ahead and get the process started. I just need you to pull that email back up. And I'm actually getting ready to send you over a one-page agreement. We can go over the agreement together. If you got any questions while we're going through it, just shoot them away out of my way. All right? Okay. Give me one second. I'm sending you over a one-page agreement, and it's coming from uh, Hometown Cash Buyers again. So let me know when you receive that. I was going to ask you just go ahead and put a tent in my place. You understand? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so I was going to ask you to put a tent on that property and just move in there. Oh, man, I know you weren't going to do that, man. You was going to catch the coronavirus then, man. We can't have you doing that, man. Come on, now. <laughs> Come on now, we're gonna have to get you treated, man. We're gonna get you some of that vaccine if you do that. <laughs> they don't have a vaccine, man. Or if they do, you know, you gotta be careful, man. You gotta be more careful than that now. Come on now. Did you did you receive that agreement? I'm actually pulling it up on my end right here. Did you receive that? Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Okay. Just let me know when you're ready, man. I'm ready when you're ready. We go through every uh number together and uh, I'll make sure that you understand everything and uh uh, and once we get your autograph on this, it officially allow us to be able to secure the funds for you and we can get the process started. Where well, Aaron go, man? He's sleeping, bro. I think he took too much of his own melatonin. Hey, Aaron, Aaron had to put a, he had to put a washcloth on his forehead. You've got him sweating, man. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, sir. And what I could do oh, is nice. I actually can, I actually can go through the whole thing with you real quick. So uh, if you could pull it up, man, let's start at the top together. That way I can go over every line with you, and uh, that way if you got any questions, I can get a handle for you. Can we make that happen? All right. Let me know when you got to pull it up. I might pour me a shot, man. I might pour me a shot real quick on these boys, man. Let's go, man. Let's uh, my guys on here. I, I see you drinking that good stuff, man. Got a little money over there, huh? No, man. We chill. We quarantine, <laughs> man. Hey, Alex, you ready to go? Yeah. All right, we're going to start at the, the top. It say, as is contract for sale and purchase. Uh, let's start where it say disagreement is made. Are you following along with me? And guys, when you guys are going through the contract, make sure you're talking kind of slow. All right, let's start at the top. This agreement is made April the 9th, 2020, by and between Alex Reyes and Hometown Cash Buyers and our signs. 
The parties agree that the seller shall sell and the buyer shall buy the following described real property pursuant to the terms and conditions of this contract and any addendum. So that's basically just letting you know that uh, hometown cash buyers, which is ourselves, will be buying the properties, uh, property from Mr. Alex Reyes. That started the property description. All right, the street address city, the state and the zip code is 5627 Oakford Road, Capitol Heights, Maryland, together with all existing improvements and fixtures, including built-in appliances, built-in furnishings, window and floor coverings, uh, screens and blinds, real property, unless specifically excluded by this agreement. So uh, it's talking about a lot of stuff that's gonna be in the property, but me and you both know that we're gonna uh, demo the property, we're probably gonna knock it down, and we're gonna rebuild another yeah. property, so we don't gotta worry about that. It makes sense? Yeah. All right, number one is purchase price. Buyer agrees to pay seller $37,800. The funds to be held in escrow as a deposit would be $500. So we're all gonna put $500 with the title company. We wanna let you know that we're very serious about this, but at the same time, the $500 is your fund. You're gonna receive that back at the closing table and the balance that's due at closing is $37,300. Does that make sense to you? Makes sense. Make sure you get the go ahead every number. All right, number two. The deposit shall be made payable, delivered to, and held by the escrow agent, uh, Quantum Title. Uh, that is the title company that we use in all of our transactions. They're going to make sure that we get this deal closed up, and uh, they will be communicating with you uh, throughout this process. That doesn't make, doesn't make sense? Yep. Number three is the closing. Closing of this transaction shall occur on or before May the 8th. And uh, the reason why I put May the 8th, uh, just in case that something come up with the title, but as long as the title was clean, oh, I want to get this thing closed in 10 business days because I have to liquidate my funds. And I'm sure that you want to get this thing closed up too, correct? Yeah, because I don't want to be changing my mind, man. Hey, wait, hey, listen, I, I, I don't want you to change your mind now. Hey, we don't need you to do that, man. I already got the funds secured for you. I got them, I got them approved, I mean. And uh, once we get done with this, I officially have them secured. All right, we're going to get this done for you, okay? All right, so it say the uh, transaction shall occur on or before May the 8th, 2020, unless delayed by other provisions of this agreement or modified by the parties in writing. Buyers shall be given sole possession of the property at closing. If the property is not vacant, which we already know it is, buyer may extend closing until seller delivers possession. Time is of the essence. Any personal property located on the property after closing becomes the property of the buyer. So, of course, we know that the property is vacant. You probably don't have anything that you want inside the property. So uh, we don't have to worry about that line. Now, I do want you to tune in to this part. Buyer, which is myself, shall pay all closing costs, title insurance, title search, municipal lien search, inspections, survey, if any, and recording fees for the deed. So as I promised you at the beginning, uh, we will be taking care of all of the closing costs. I don't want you to have to think about having to come out of pocket for anything, okay? All right, so we're going to keep it going. It says seller shall pay yeah, existing. Now you know, uh, now you know that uh, I got an approval letter from WSSC already. I'm sorry? Put, uh, I said I, I got an approval for uh, water and sewer from uh, Man, that's perfect. WSSC. And then I got uh, also the place of A already. Okay, so that'll even be perfect then, man. So that'll give us a head start. So that, that way we don't have to do all those things. And I want to let you know, man, I really appreciate that because it's going to help us get a head start, okay? Yeah. All right. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. So it say that a uh, seller uh, shall pay existing mortgages, which we already talked about, liens and other encumbrances. Seller shall pay, uh, uh, I'm sorry, seller shall be charged at closing for any property tax amount due. That's reason of proration. Uh, that's the reason why we wanted to up the price to 37.8 because we wanted to give you enough room to be able to pay those taxes. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Let's go down to number four, condition of the property. The parties agree that the property is being sold in as is condition with all defects being at the sole risk of the buyer Seller shall not be responsible for any repairs of any kind whatsoever. Seller does not warrant the condition of the property or the improvements thereon. Uh, seller shall maintain the property in its current condition until closing, except for normal wear and tear. So all they're saying is, as the seller, you don't have to pay anything. We're going to take care of everything. Uh, you don't have to worry about the condition of the property. We already know that we're going to be tearing it down. 
And uh, that's all I want you to worry about. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Number five is access. The risk of loss shall remain with the seller until closing. Seller will provide buyer and its inspectors, contractors, appraisers, and prospective partners and clients reasonable access to the property. So that was something that I did think about when we was first talking. Uh, is the property wide open right now, or how do we gain access to the property so that way we can uh, conduct the proper inspections? What do we have to do as far as that? You can go in there and get in. Okay. I, I just wanted to make sure of that, man. I wanted to make sure that we was on the same page with that. And the last thing, we have miscellaneous provisions. Uh, we got A is contingent upon satisfactory inspection suitable to purchaser. And then I have B, additional terms. I got no commissions because I do want to let you know, not only we're going to take care of the closing costs, but you have no additional fees or commissions or anything like that. And uh, that's pretty much about it, man. So my question is, uh, before we get your autograph and officially secure the funds, do you have any questions that's important to you right now? Okay, so if you could do this, if you can hit the box below, if you can just sign your autograph, it's going to send you a copy over first because I want you to have the first official copy and it's going to send us a copy and then I'm going to get it over to transactions. They're going to get it right over to the title company and we'll officially be able to secure the funds and get the process started. Hey. All right, well, actually, one thing before anything. Yes, sir. So the property is not in my wife's name, so I don't know, would that be a problem or? That's a good no, question. No, it won't be. So, so that's not going to be a problem. If the property is in your wife's name, as long as she comes to the closing table, along with yourself, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to have her to get the process started. So we we'll definitely have her sign off on the documents, but she don't have to sign off on it right now to officially get the process started because you guys are married. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, man. So other than that, all you got to do is if you just give us your autograph, I already signed it below. It's going to give you a copy over first, and, and I'm, I'm going to stay on the phone with you real quick because I'm going to make sure that it comes through on my end. And uh, once you sign it, I'll definitely give you a heads up that it actually came, and I'll let you know what is the next step to the process. So let me know. Uh, once you sign it, I'm once speaking, you... I'm speaking on the little blue square. Uh, uh, the yes, sir. You click in there. You need a, it, Are you on the phone or are you on the computer right now? I'm on the phone. So turn your phone to the side horizontally. That way that you can click in the box, you'll be able to sign, you'll hit submit, and then you'll hit apply. Okay. All you have to do is all you have to do is turn the phone to the side. Uh, once you sign, you hit submit, and then it lets you hit apply. And what I'll do is I'll let you know when it come in on my end, and uh, that way that I can tell you the next steps of the process. So what is showing you right now exactly? Huh? What what the screen is showing you uh, right now at this moment? That way I can navigate you through the process. What is showing you right now? I'm, I'm clicking on the little thing. You know. So when you when you click on it, it should let you be able to sign your signature right there. Uh, is it letting you do that right now? And what is what is actually showing you right now? So that way I can help you with this. And all you have to do is, uh, do you see my signature below already? Do you see the one that I signed already? Yeah, I see that one. Okay, when you go up to your signature, uh, where it say seller at, let me let me let me pull it back up in my system real quick. So it should say Alex Reyes, and it should have date right here. It's not letting you click in that box right there? Yeah, it only clicks, but it doesn't, it doesn't take you nowhere else. And it's not letting you sign anything. It should let you either sign your signature or or you should be able to click signature and it'll sign one for you. It's not giving you that option? No. Let's do this then. Let me send over another copy to you. Let's see if it make it happen that way, okay? Okay, yeah, because that one is not letting me. We'll take care of it, man. This, uh, listen, that's not the first or the last time it's going to happen, so... Uh, the good thing is I can just send it back to you again and we see if we can make it work. So I actually just send you another copy real quick. Okay, that's good. So I'm actually getting ready to pull up a new copy myself. I actually see it right here. 
Let me know when you got to pull it up. I'm trying to turn this to a good day, man. You know, I'm actually glad I got a chance to speak to you. I caught you at the right time. I know you've been, uh, you've been trying to contact me, you know. Man, we've been reaching out to you for the longest now, man. I feel like you've been running from us, man. I've been trying to reach you for the longest now. <laughs> it's all love, man. We're going to get it done for you, man. I'm going to make sure we get this done. It's going to be the smoothest process you could think of. All right, so it looked like you just signed it up. I actually see it at the, uh, I see it on my bottom right hand corner. It looked like you signed it. I do want to let you know, congratulations on uh, taking the next step on selling your property. With you signing this agreement, it officially let us to be able to secure the funds for you. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna let my partner, Shari, she's gonna reach out back out to you. So that way that we can let you know the next steps of the process, but we'll have to come out to the property, take a look at it, uh, see how much the demolition project is gonna cost us and we'll definitely be in contact with you. Uh, what is the best time for us to be able to reach you? Uh, just, just send me a text before you guys call me. Okay, okay. I, I didn't answer this number. It was a 404, so. Okay, okay, that's great. So what I'll do is I'll have Shari uh, reach out to you. She'll give you a call, and that way you guys can go from there. And again, man, I just want to appreciate you for giving me the time today to be able to help you out, to be able to add value. This actually made my day, even though that you're selling your property, and we're gonna do everything in our power to get this off your hands, okay? Sounds good to me. All right, I want you to have a blessed day, and uh, we'll be in contact very soon. All right, you too. Thank All right, have a blessed day, sir. Okay. All right, now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There we go. Oh! <laughs> struck, it, struck it wise hot, first call. Damn. Yo. Peace, Are peace. you kidding me? Respect. <laughs> respect, bro. Respect. Man, y'all better, hey, better shoot me a tag, man, for everybody that's watching. I love it, man. I love it. Y'all got to shoot me a tag. Do that, man. In Virginia, we can't um, – I haven't heard that as far as being able to the, – the, the the husband or wife can sign on behalf of the other party, even if they're not on title? No. So uh, that, that is uh, – So with that, guys um, – so um, this is called, uh, th there's a legal term for it. It's called um, contract. Um, it, it starts with contract. It, there's another word for it. Contract validation. So uh, for a contract to be 100% valid, you do need both parties' signatures on it. However, you can still open title. If you are married, what's yours is his, what's his is hers, right? So um, if you are married, you as one person can make the decision to sign a contract and open up escrow because it still validates an agreement. I could technically buy 50% of this property from one married party if I wanted to and then uh, wait to buy the rest. So that's actually called adverse possession. I've done that where you've bought out shares of a property and then sued for the other shares that you did not get. So uh, contract validation is a real thing, guys. This is something that not a lot of people understand. Uh, what another, uh, another thing that people don't know is that if you get a deed signed, you don't have to record the deed for it to be valid. Some people think you have to record it. If I have a deed to a house, I own it 100% because it's a validated contract that states that I own it. And that does not vary from state to state, guys. That's just contract law. So remember that, okay? But uh, for the, the actual thing to close and you to get title policy, a title company will not close without having both of them at the table. However, you can still start the process and you can get to the second party later with just one signature if, it, if it's involved with a uh, married, married party. So remember that, guys. Hey, Keith, Keith, you're using the, the Hercules uh, podio, right? Uh, I think we, uh, I think we got something else. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it's, similar, it's probably some similar things for sure. For sure. But we didn't tweak it up so much. Uh, that it, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like that. That's what I'm talking about. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. But on a serious note, man, I want y'all to just, you know, just, just really just pay attention, man. Like y'all think that this was easy, but I'm a firm believer that the easiest deals can be the hardest because it's because the guy knew exactly what he wanted. That don't mean that you would have, I would have said the right thing. I wanted to make sure I took all the juice out of him 
So he don't think that this is just a sweet deal. Yep. That's why I played the finance department role. Let me speak to my partners. Let me get it approved for you. Because if you if you let them think it is sweet, they're not going to sign it. They're going to think they can get more for it. So the key is, even when they throw out a low price, make sure you squeeze all the juice out so they don't think that they can get more for the property. That's the key to it. That's why I said that my partner is really going to be at 20 to 30. But I understand what's going on at this moment in the economy right now. I, w- I want to do the 35. I don't want to give you a hassle. You know what I mean? Even when he said something about the taxes, I didn't want to just say, oh, I can do the taxes. Let me go back to the finance department again. Let me get it approved. Everything has to get approved before you make it happen with them. I want you guys to really understand that, man. Let me say something on that real quick, guys. The key to using that finance department option is what Keith did on that call is he placed everything on the finance department, all right? So whatever point he has to go back and ask for a price reduction with that seller, an effort to get that price down or whatever the case might be, there's any issue, whatever, push the closing date back, yada, yada, yada. He can take that and place that on the finance department, all right? And what that does is it, can, it, it, it keeps the relationship cohesive with Keith and the seller. So the seller's not going to be frustrated with Keith because they built the rapport. They got that relationship. Keith told them to stop eating McDonald's, right? <laughs> what, what, what it's going to do, all right, is that seller would just be mad at the finance department. And Keith's role is, hey, look, guys, look, look, man, this is what my finance department is telling me. I understand the frustration. You know, I know that, you know, we're supposed to do 35000 We got to kick this down to 30000 But I want to get this done. This is what my finance department is telling me. Boom, 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 boom. You got to be able to carry that. And that's why it's so important uh, to anchor that, that finance department piece, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, uh, the, the pressure off of you as well and the frustration uh, with that person, if that person's frustrated with you, right? It reflects on them because it's not you that's making a decision. It's your financial department. Like right. right now, me and Chris were basically Keith's financial department. We were going back and forth, uh, validating that deal to make sure that it was something that it was like, that was worth the price. So I think that's an easy deal, guys. What do y'all think? Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. That's lovely. And guys, um, uh, in case, in case you have that mental blocks telling yourself, well, I'm not a salesperson. I can't do this. Um, people naturally do this all the time. If you have ever tried to make a sell and somebody says, I need to talk to my wife. A lot of times they don't really need to talk to their wife. You know, they don't, all they're doing is exactly what Keith just did. And that's that there's a higher authority. It's called a higher authority position, right? So all it is is saying, Hey, there's somebody else. Me and you are on the same team. We're cool, but there's somebody else we got to talk to me. And that's the bad guy. I'm working with you on this. And you can kind of tell he controls the relationship by the way he answered the first question when Keith opened up, are there any other decision makers in the building, right? So, I mean, the guy didn't feel like his wife was a decision maker. So he's like probably the one who is controlling the flow of the decisions that are made within the household. So, I mean, he just automatically assumed no matter what, the wife was probably going to be on board with it because it seems like this house is a, a burden to him anyway. Man, I think they, I don't think they understood what you just told him. I asked the guy, I said, before I get into the condition or anything else with the property, let me ask you this. Is it any other decision makers? That way I don't get down the contract. I got to go speak to my wife. I got to go speak to the husband, the lawyer. Let's get this out of the way right now. Who else is the decision maker before I ask about anything about the property? That way I already know what I'm looking at because a lot of people, they go into the call, they get all the way down the contract or get all the way down the strip or whatever, now they don't even they ain't even know it was somebody else. I can't play that game. I played it too many times. I'm not playing that game. I need to know who all is involved with the transaction. That was fire, guys. That right there, it should be enough right there. Yeah. <laughs> For real. <Come> on. <laughs> all right, y'all. That we're gonna go right, ahead and call it a night. Man. Let's go home, man. I'm on mute. Yeah, guys, <laughs> I'm on mute. I'll see y'all later. I need to close on now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> all righty, guys. So, hey, uh, hey do, do me a favor, y'all. Do me a favor. If, if you haven't already and you're getting some value from this, go to IG on your phone, tag Chris, tag Keith, tag me, tag Quentin, right? T- uh, take a snapshot of this and then put fire so that anybody who didn't show up, uh, um, you, you throw some salt on the wounds. Yeah, show some love, fire please. Emojis, man. I'm not going to lie, guys. Emoji, That's man. The missile, right the missile in, the, in the fire, man. Let me see those things, man. <laughs> Hey, Q, uh, they say they want to see you up next, bro. Uh-oh. Uh, let's get it. I'm ready. All right, so we go into the next one just right away. With the, the next one's in Mississippi. We got a seller named Linda Johnson. Let's see the notes on this property. It's a tired landlord. That's pretty much it. 
Uh, let's see, da, 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 where is it at? A lady named Ann submitted this lead. Give me just Ann, one second. Ann, where are you at? Hey, yo, Q, Shelby said uh, you got that, that guy from Pennsylvania or something to still call back or something. What's up? That might be a good one for you. For which one? Guy you talked to last time. All right. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. Uh, Shelby, drop the guy's phone number real quick. Let's do it live. Fuck it. Let's get close, it. Close them up, man. All right, all right. She said, she said un momento. <laughs> <laughs> Let's close them up, man. He was ready to go uh, the other day. Where is my Houston family? Where are you guys at, man? It's crawfish season over there, man. I need Me and my girl, we've been eating shitty crawfish in San Antonio. Bro, we're about to make that trip over there to Houston real quick because, you know, it's just as cl it's closer than uh, – New Orleans, because New Orleans is the king of crawfish. What's up, Keith? You want to do another one or what? Oh, baby, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got one right here. All right. Hey, man, I like to have fun with it, too, man. I don't like to be too serious, because at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, for the people that's watching, you got to be relaxed when you cold calling. You know what I mean? Like something that Chris was doing that I peeped out, you know, and something that I do, I've been doing, you know, a lot, you know, you know, recent, well, not even recently, I've always been doing this. When you on camera, man, that's when you want to pause the phone and say, this is what I'm getting ready to do. I'm about to show you what I'm getting ready to do. I'm going to hang, pull up the agreement, and I'm about to see the company commitment or whatever. You got to show them that. Listen, did y'all peep out how I told him? I, listen, I don't do no callbacks. That been done. I'm going to see this company commitment. You can take a look at our company, you know us a little better, know the service we provide while I'm walking into the finance department. That way they can stay, hey, you, you can be on hold for one to two minutes. I want you to read this company commitment. That way they already got their email pulled up. Then I'm gonna come back on the phone and we're gonna get it settled. It's that simple. You know, you, you call them back 10, 15 minutes, they might not answer. I ain't got time for that no more. I done took too many losses. That's the only reason we like this right now. You gotta, be, you gotta be, you know, you gotta be ready, guys. You gotta be ready. H Town, hold it down. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. We holding big things down here in Texas, rolling in the big bodies, 20s on a Lexus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All righty, guys, let's get it. I'm calling this guy right now. This guy's name is Ray. So uh, a lot of y'all didn't get a chance to check it out, right? But last week, we did a free session for everybody. I called this guy who was wanting like, I don't know, $650,000 for his property. His house sits on a bayou, and uh, it's a really nice area, right? There's a river that's right there, and he's kind of just doing his thing. And uh, the house has been sitting vacant and got damaged by Hurricane Harvey. So just some backstory, right? I got him to drop from like 650 to 500, and we needed closer to 450. So let me go forward and follow up with this guy, and I'm going to close this, dude. We're going to get the contract right now. All right, let's get it. <laughs> Ken says, it, it, Houston, is man. it weird I listen to slow jams while, while cold calling? Hey, you got to get in that zone, man. You got to get in that zone. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> All right, let's get it. I remember everything about this property. Somebody asked for the recording of the free session. It's, if you were on the part one, it's in your email. Check your email. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a charger real quick, fellas. Give me one sec. Hey, Mr. Raymond. Yeah. How you doing? This is Quentin. I spoke with you uh, last weekend. Yeah. Hey. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, I didn't get a chance to call you back. I know I was going to. I just got really, really busy, man. Some stuff happened with some family, but um, I wanted to call you back because, you know, like I said, business has to keep going, right? Right. <laughs> How you been? Did you have a good week so far? Uh, so far. That's yeah. good, man. I didn't even ask you. What, what, what do you do? Well, I worked in the oil and gas industry. Mm, okay. Go oil and gas industry. Is that taking a hit right now? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I couldn't even imagine, bro. Um, what, 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 what do you think has been like, a, you know, one of the things that, that COVID-19 really affected with, with that business? Well, it was actually that, and then the, uh, Russians and the, uh, and the, uh, and the Saudis having a piston match. So we we'll trap price oil some more. So it just, we got basically, basically double whammy. <laughs> you know what, man, real estate has been the same way. I'll tell you guys right now, real estate is just like, 
you know, it, it, you know, we're still buying properties. We really are, you know, but right now it's hard to determine the values on properties, you know, but uh, right, it doesn't right, seem to be affecting right. anything crazy, crazy, but I will say it's been helping. It, it's been making us buy a little <laughs> bit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So, you know, but I, I really like this property that you had. I just kind of wanted to follow up with you a little bit. Um, did you get a chance to kind of go over certain things? Is the house still vacant right now since when we last spoke? Let me go over this again, because I got to refresh my memory on this thing. I lost my notepad, man. My son spilled like juice all over it. So, uh, you know, yeah. there goes everything I remembered about your house. So uh, it is right here on uh, Grisser, right? Gesser, yes. Gesser, that's right. That's right. Okay. So I remember when we were talking about this property, you were wanting like close to 600000 right? Well, yeah, but I, I'll come down from that. I understand. I understand. Now, uh, look, look, is there any money that you possibly owe on this property that would delay things? like any type of liens or judgments? Because you did say it got hit by Harvey, right? Was there insurance on this property when it got hit by that hurricane? Yeah. Oh, amazing, man, amazing. Are there any types of like crazy judgments or liens that would get in the way of us buying this property? Not that I would know of. Okay. Have you tried to sell this house before? No. Okay, okay. I even, you're the first one I've actually even, well, the guy, that guy called before, you're the only person I've ever even talked to about about uh, uh selling it i understand okay now i just gotta ask because uh i think you told me that you inherited this property right no the one my property in new jersey this is the one in jersey I yeah i didn't inherit i actually bought that on the open market also oh okay 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 you know I, i'd be willing to take a look at what you got in jersey too man if it's a property that you're trying to take off uh if, that you're trying to sell um, that, that could be something that, that could possibly work. I know right now in New Jersey, man, these coronavirus numbers are at an all-time high. I saw there was 150,000 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in uh, New York, and Jersey's right behind it at 60,000. Yeah, this is actually in southern Jersey. I'm more in a more rural uh, area. I'm actually in a seashore, close to the seashore uh, area. I'm actually, my house, house is actually in a lagoon with a dock. Oh wow! So it's like uh, there's a there's some water next to it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful, man. Right I go fishing a lot, man. But you know, like I'm from San Antonio, bro. So all we get down here is creek fishing, and uh, right. <laughs> I'd be lucky if I catch you know a trout or something. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. So you know, I I love fishing, bro. That's one of the things that I've been doing my whole life. Um, so look, uh, I like I like the property. Like I said, I think we're we're pretty close to a number here. Now I will say uh, I'm almost positive because I, I took a look in the appraisal district the last time we spoke. I got a value for this property right now, appraised for the lot value, the lot right. Because what I plan on doing, and this is me just being fully transparent with you, Raymond, is is tearing the property down and then building a new house, right? So I kind of have to factor in the cost to build a little bit, right? But this is something that um, you know it, it's stuff that I would take care of, right? And just, thinking right. about like kind of like what my exit strategy is going to be. But for a property like this, I'm looking at tearing the thing down and then reconstructing it. So, you know, I have to, with those things in mind, uh, you know, kind of like 100% just having to rip the property down, you know, and, and what that would cost. It's easier to destroy a property than it is to fix it. I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so, I know. You know, I love the lot size. I think there's something that we can definitely do. But look, let me be honest with you and just straight to the point. Um, I'm not trying to negotiate you. I'm not trying to do anything crazy. I just like to be straightforward, uh, especially if we plan. I, I mean, I would love to, if you have another property, I would love to buy it, uh, love to buy that other property from you as well. But um, I can probably give you $450,000 for that property right now. Like 100%, I know that I can possibly close in about... Yeah, with the virus and everything that, that's going on, it's it's a weird market, you know, but that's a comfortable number for me. And uh, I would cover closing costs on this and you wouldn't have to worry about doing a damn thing to this property. Uh, you know, we would we would rip it down. We would we would build a new property. You wouldn't have to worry about rezoning it, getting any types of permits. We would handle all of that, plus the closing costs on the back end. So, uh, look, Raymond, I really want to make this happen with you. Can we make it work at 450000 can you come up a little bit more and I, I need to think about it. Can you go up to about 470? Uh, I'll tell you what, I can meet you in the middle at 460. Okay. And I'll still cover the closing costs. But if I come up any more, man, I'll tell you, it'll probably only be just a little bit, but we'd have to, 
if you can help me out with paying some of these closing costs to buy a property this expensive, I'll tell you right now, to buy a property this expensive, the closing costs are normally about 8% of the purchase price. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not 8%. They're like a little under 1.2, uh, 1.1% of the purchase price. So I know that for me to close this thing, uh, I'll tell you right now, um, you know, it's going to cost me like four or five grand just to close and get a title policy. So, right, um, right. you know, the title policy for me is insurance because I want to be able to resell the house. If I found out that you plus Bill plus Bob plus Joe all own the house together, you know, uh, you know, it, then I would be the one to be stuck with that property. And four hundred and sixty thousand dollars is a lot of money. You know what I mean? Uh, right. <laughs> So uh, I wouldn't mind. I'll, I'll cover the title policy still if we can agree at four hundred and sixty thousand. Uh, you know, how soon would you want to make this work? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I have to give me a few days uh, or a week to think. A couple of days to think about it. Like I said, I it's kind of this all you know happened at one time. So um, you know, I got mixed feelings of whether I want to stay here in Houston or or uh, or, or go up north or something. But uh, you know, um, you know I, 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 if we do this, we can do this pretty quick, you know. Okay. Um, and let me tell you something. Uh, you know, I, I run a real estate business, right? And we kind of already right. talked about that. You're in the oil industry, amazing businesses, right? And so, like, with, with us being businessmen, I feel like we could just cut straight to the chase on everything. Uh, look, right. I, I really want to buy this property. I'm willing to give you 462 right now if you'd be willing to make a decision with me. And I'll tell you right now that uh, if you need help finding another property, because you want, you may, you tell me you may want to stay in Houston, right? So how about this? What if I were to put you in contact with one of my agents up there? His name is Marco Salvador, uh, Sal, Salvador, something like that. It's Marco Salazar. Salazar. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but Marco Salazar, he's one of the top agents in Houston, and he can get you approved for a place very quickly. You could probably use the money from the sale and buy a property so you can stay in Houston. And I'll make sure to put you somewhere where the barbecue is nice, man, you know? So uh, yeah. I think with that amount of money, you should be able to live in the best part of Houston, you know? Right, right. Uh, yeah, it sounds, uh, actually, I have an agent who, if I was looking, I, I, there's somebody I would use uh, who I've worked with before. Okay. No, I completely respect that. You know, if you got somebody that you're already comfortable with, you know, but you, right, I don't this, think... This person, this person helped me. I think... Mean, I mean, I think this person helped me with uh, in the, the hurricane. She actually found me an apartment and stuff. And she did a lot of things for me. So I, uh, if I do decide to do something here, I will use her. Okay, I completely understand. And look, uh, there's another thing as well. If we do move forward with this, and if you're willing to make a decision with me right now, I can send over that agreement. It's very easy and it's very straightforward. You know, I'm in Texas, so I kind of understand some of the contracts that we can use, but I do have a two page agreement that I can send you real quick. And if you're willing to get this thing going and get it rocking and rolling, man, I'd, I'd love to do business with you. And uh, I think that we can create something long-term here. I mean, if you're in the oil industry, the gas industry and all that, I, I mean, I'd love to pick your brain on well, some of that stuff. I'm actually, I'm actually Okay, got you, got you. Well, I mean, either way, you know, I'm pretty sure you know a lot. I wouldn't mind learning. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I could buy you a coffee or something and we can get into it a little bit later. Yeah, it could do, could be. I hope your time's worth 462000 is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, you know, if we can make this decision, I can send over this contract to you right now. We can get this thing popping. Why don't you send it over to me? Can you give, give me a, a day to think about this? I, no, I completely understand. Look, uh, all I ask to Raymond is before you make a final decision on this property, that you make me the last phone call that you make. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I really do think that this is some potential here and I really want to move forward with it. But, uh, no, you know, you'd be, the one, you'd, be, you'd be the one if I'm going to sell it, you'd be the one I sell it to. That's what I'm talking about, man. I love that. Yeah, I no, love no, that. No, no, because you've been straightforward on this. Yeah, you know, the other guy was blah, blah, blah. But, you know, uh, uh, if I do sell the property, then I also I will sell it to you. Okay. Well, look, this is my direct line, Raymond. Please save you my know, number. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to solicit anybody else, so don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, a true businessman. You know, That's what I'm talking about. I really appreciate well, you know, that. Just like I said, there's a, there's a lot of decisions for me to make because I'm basically retired, and uh, and uh, uh, you know, I said there's, there's there's a couple of things holding me back in Houston. There's some that are not, and. Uh, I, I had helped this lady out many years ago, homeless lady, and I don't know where she is here in Houston. I, you know, I'm kind of looking for a place for her, but uh, 
uh, I'll, I'll lean towards selling it. So, but and you will be the only one I would, uh, I would sell to. Man, I really appreciate you. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, what did you do for that lady? Why did you do that for that lady, the homeless lady? Uh, I helped her. She just I ran into her, and helped her, and you know, it was one of these things. Let me tell you a crazy story, real fast. It's only going to take a minute. So I've had a crazy week, Raymond, since I talked to you last, right? And let me just give you a real life example. <laughs> My wife woke me up two days ago at uh, 4 a.m. in the morning, and there was a cop knocking on my door. And uh, the cop comes out and he talks to me, right? And he says, Mr. Flores, did you lend your vehicle to someone today? I said, uh, no, no, I didn't, you know, and my car's parked outside. And I said, uh, I hate to tell you, but it's not outside. I said, well, oh, <laughs> what do you mean? You know, and he's like, look, we had a, a major accident happen and uh, the plates trace back to you. And that's why we're here. I said, what are you talking about? I drive a Dodge Challenger 2019, man. It's one of my, 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 my most prized possessions. This is my, like my dream car, right? And, uh, you know, we just got the engine plate replaced. I put a V8 in it, bro, and that thing was revving. And let me just give you an example. Some 16-year-old kid used a computer to uh, break into my car and start it because, you know, you can't hotwire push to start cars. And uh, he straight up drove my vehicle into a house right down the street to my, from, from my house. And uh, <laughs> you know what, man, all I've had on my mind, even with all that going on, is giving you a call back and seeing if we can make this work. Because, you know, things are replaceable, right? But people aren't. And uh, I think we got a real connection here, Raymond. I, re I, re I really, truly believe that uh, I I'm destined to buy this property at this time. So, you know what, all things aside, no one was hurt. The people who lived in that house, no one was hurt. You can literally go into the Google right now and type in car crashes into house. And uh, you'll see that some 16 year old kid straight up crashed into my crib, you know, but before all of that happened, um, I was able to see the kid and I pointed at him, you know, and he was sitting in the back and then they took him away. But I plan on getting this kid's information and showing him real estate. Um, so it's kind of like exactly what you're doing uh, with that no, with that good. lady, because I, I think that God does things right. And he puts people in your past so that you can learn from it. Right. Right. And so I'm right. thankful for every lesson. And uh, I truly think that if we were to purchase this property right now, this would be another lesson for me. And I think that, you know, we were destined to talk. So uh, let, let's make this, let's make this happen. Raymond, please give me a call as soon as you can. Yeah, do you want my, uh, do you want my email address? Yes, please. Do you have a cell phone? Do you think you can text that to me? Um, yeah, let me, what's your no phone number again? I'll text it to you. It's 210 896 Raymond, I look forward to talking to you, okay? And uh, I pray yeah. you have a good weekend. If I don't hear from you this weekend, man, just, you know, enjoy it. You know, sip a yeah, beer, eat me. some barbecue, you'll, man. You'll, you'll hear from me soon. Cause, and I said, you know, you're doing what I wanted to do. And actually, it was a dream of mine. I, I had an idea about what type of house I wanted to build on that property. But uh, things are changing, so I, I don't know if I want to, you know, like I said, I don't think I want to do that now. So, um if I don't hear, if, if, if you call and I don't answer, I just want you to know I'm trying to get a new car. <laughs> okay, okay. But I'm, I'll have my phone on me, man. I answer almost 90% of the time. So well, I'll, look... I'll, I'll, text you, I'll text you my uh, email tonight, okay? Okay, I'll send you over all yeah. the paperwork so you can take a and look have, at it. You, you have, yeah, all right. All righty, Raymond, God bless you, man. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, okay, take care. Thanks, Bye. Raymond. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, Good work, man. Good work. Yeah, man. That's a good one right there. So highlight some things, guys. What did y'all get from that? Great report building, man. I mean, you had a great report with them uh, last week. Kind of picked up in the same spot and uh, continued to build the rapport. And, uh, you know, got him at a point, man, where it's uh, – he's going to get over that hump and sign that contract here pretty soon. Hey, let, let, let me be real, bro. Let me be real. I, I think so. So everybody has their own strengths, right? This is what I see. And guys, y'all tell me if my if you think my feedback is off. I kind of lean more towards the Quentin Flores style as opposed to the Chris Jefferson and Keith Everett style, because y'all will notice this. 
even though uh, so Keith is 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 a little bit more on the aggressive side while he's still kind and building the rapport he follows a strong process I don't see Q following a strong process you know what I mean and I'll be real and, and Q tell me if I'm wrong but I, I myself I don't follow a strong process I have kind I have a general process it's mostly rapport and and kind of getting the person to to really vibe with me and then kind of leading them along the way but that's something that that I respect a hundred because Q is able to build a rapport with a with a doorknob, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. I love it. I love. It. I've seen. I've seen this dude drop people down thousands of dollars just on the building rapport. You know what I mean? I one time raised off of rapport. I helped Aaron raise thirteen million in private money for a ranch deal. Yep. And we did it in one phone call. So look, uh, sometimes, man, people are going to do business with you based off of the person that you are. And uh, if you can just be genuine and be who you are, because the who you are is the most powerful thing that you're ever going to be, people are going to want to do business with you guys. There's too many cats out here that got to change their voice real quick. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? Check this out. My name is Quentin. I'm a hardcore closer. What's good? Right? If you have to do that, you're never going to make it in this business, guys. People are going to do business with you because of who you are, not who you're trying to be. So remember that, okay? I, I, and I respect that, and that's and that's and that's a key statement that you know both you guys made because like even though that and and I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you and, and the same thing with uh with CJ right here with Chris you know like we aggressive but we smartly aggressive we ain't aggressive under like like you know how like Russell Westbrook sometimes he's out of control when he go to the hoop we we we're very much in control but we still go hard though if that makes yep. sense. Yeah, like like yep. everything I say, I'm expecting to come back good or bad, and I'm anticipating on both of them, so I know exactly where to go next. Yeah, so that's something that's key, and uh, and that's the good thing, man, about you guys, man. Like like this to be able to watch these guys, and, you know, and just see different things, man, is is really amazing. To me, it's amazing. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's, yeah, it's I love it, man. The big takeaway, man, I think everybody should have is it's just different styles, man. You can pull different things from different styles, but you got to craft your own way what feels comfortable, what works for you. The way that I might cold call or Keith might cold call might not feel comfortable for Quentin or Aaron and vice versa, right? So you got to find out what works for you, what's effective. The most important thing I think with all that is we're all talking to the same sellers, guys, at the end of the day, right? And what happens is a seller is going to sell to who they land with and connect to, all right? And I think Keith mentioned this on the last call. This is something I do all the time for years and it works great. If I got a seller that's motivated and wants to sell, but for whatever reason they don't land with me or my personality, I'm going to get somebody on the phone that's the opposite personality to make that call. The seller doesn't know that we're connected, right? So I'm going to get somebody else to make that call so we can get them wrapped up and get them under contract, guys. But uh, nah, Quentin, good job, man. That, that was good, man. I'll tell you, one of the things that I love about Chris Jefferson's approach is he has that hip hop and R&B 1990s, 1985 <laughs> sounds of love making. Hey, man, you got to you gotta talk to him nice, man. You got to talk to him nice. <laughs> All right, who's getting in next, guys? Who's getting in next? Let's get Aaron it. Drinking, man. I'm going to go ahead and jump in here, man. We're going to leave the best for last, man. We're going to let Aaron go last, man. Oh, okay. Okay. Y'all know he y'all know y'all know he's being facetious, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got Chris ready to go, man. Yeah, man. We gotta get to it. It's East Coast time, man. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I All think right, yeah. this might be the best one right here, man. We really we, we bringing the heat this time, man. Let's go, man. What's the address, Q? Address for this next one is uh we're looking at North Carolina, Richard Lodge. His phone number is 856-419-8259. And uh, the address is 7306 Summerland Drive. It's in Rayleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh. <clears throat> it says here that he is currently staying in New Jersey and can't really take care of the house. All right. Lodge. So he's in Jersey, can't really take care of the house. Richard what? Uh, Richard Lodge. All right, cool. Like uh, like a lodge that like a lodge cabin or something like that. I don't know, man. Something like yeah. That. Did he have any type of asking price or anything like that? Uh, he said he was wanting one hundred and forty thousand. That was his asking price. And the the person who submitted this lead, her name is Anne. So that that's gonna be your business partner. Uh, he says he's currently staying in New Jersey and can't really take care of the house, so it's just sitting there. Those are the notes. 
Same thing, you said it's 70 to 80, the sales start going crazy, and they weren't filling that price, so all you need to do all right, one second. Guys, if y'all getting value from this, I better see y'all be tagging us in IG, man. We put, like, I'm telling you, to bring all of us together and our busy schedules is still a last week. Man, like I said, man, like, we all know behind the scenes that it's a lot of people that don't want to get involved. So, regardless of, man, y'all got my utmost respect. I mean, that just, yeah. nothing can change that. You know what I mean? So, I, I got respect. The current climate, man, y'all taking initiative, man. Yeah, we talk like I said, we talk stuff, but at the end of the day, I really got a lot of respect for these dudes, though. At the end of the day, we all put it on the line. A lot of people like to put brands and stuff into it, and we put it on the line every time. And it is what it is. So, you know, all right, we're we down. We're down. Hey, Richard, this is Chris with uh, VA Cash Offer, man. How are you today? I'm doing fine. That's good. That's Chris, good. Are you um, VHS? Nah, not are VHS. You yeah, you, you've been speaking with Ann in my office uh, about your property there over on Summerlin. Which property? Yeah, the one you got on okay. 7306 Summerlin. North Carolina. Right, from Raleigh. Yeah, in Raleigh, but I, I'd actually be interested in all of them if you got more to sell, but uh, Richard, I want to see if you had a couple of minutes to chat to see if we could uh, try to work up an offer here and figure out a win-win situation for the both of us. Sure, go ahead. All right, cool, man. So uh, my understanding from Ann is that you're up in Jersey and, uh, you know, just don't have the time, I guess, right now to kind of really tend to the property and, and get things figured out with it. Yeah, that's about it. I don't even know if I'm allowed to travel down there, to tell you the truth. Man, I tell you what, man, it's crazy right now, isn't it? Yeah, we're, we're trying to do the best we can and, uh, you know, keep business rolling. I'm still here in the office at night, you know, just trying to work through some properties that we've been looking at. And yeah, that's, Richard, that's my reason for giving you a call. But I tell you what, man, the economy right now and, you know, everything just going on, this health crisis, coronavirus is, is uh, just kind of been a trying yeah. situation for everybody. Right. And you're up there and uh, you're in Jersey, man. So you're in a hot pocket, man. So, you know, hope that you and your family are staying safe and taking precautions there for sure. Yeah, well. I'm in South Jersey, so it's not, it's not nearly as prevalent as it is in North Jersey. North Jersey's like death Yeah, man, close to New York, they're man. Not, they're not, yeah, New York, Jersey, parts of Jersey are higher than parts of New York. It depends where you're at. The thing is, too, is that they're not doing enough testing, and they're not, uh, they're not really providing the accurate information. I agree with you 110%. You know, I mean, down here, down, yeah, the testing, the testing is a joke. I mean, you know, it's... If you only test, uh, you know, five percent of the population, that's an accurate, uh, you know, description of how many people actually have coronavirus. Yeah. And so many people get it. I think I've already had it. Phase two. All right. Um, so many people get it, and it's only mild. Right. And you know, you you blow it off and say, I got a cold and I got flu. I got, it. but you actually had coronavirus. And the reason why I say that is that the company I work for. Yeah. It's parent headquarters is in is that right outside of Milan, Italy. Milan, Italy is like the hotbed of uh, episode. Guys, you gotta, you gotta let them talk, man. Let them build that rapport. Italy, and it happened about uh, six, eight weeks before the United States even saw the case. Wow. And we, we had, we had sent over two engineers and we had brought two engineers from Italy here, the United States. Yeah. And, uh, and and I guess it was like uh, middle of January, maybe the first week of February. My whole group got sick, every single one. Oh man, all the way back in January. We all thought it. Was, yeah, and we all thought it was the flu. Wow. It was unlike any flu that anybody has ever had. You know what I mean? And um, <clears throat> so um, you know, I have a funny feeling. I mean, I'm the oldest guy in the group. And I'm I'm 63, so I'm I'm really at risk. You sound 25, everybody man. Everybody else in the group, yeah. Well, everybody else in the group is is 22, 23, 25. Gotcha. And all young young people, you know. So, uh, and we were on these split shifts where I only worked three days a week, and so uh, I came in on the tail end of everything. I don't got him started, there. man. He about to break down the whole so health crisis I, for I me, y'all. I think uh, I caught it just on the. But I didn't get a huge viral load. Yeah, you know, I just 
down a little bit and, and my body fought it off and I survived. But uh, the, the two, two young kids that were in my group, I mean, they, they said that they get the chills, their body aches, they were taking, you know, taking, drinking, and Tylenol and all nine yards. And uh, they said they thought they were going to die. You know what I mean? Man. So I have a funny feeling New Jersey's not really being too honest with some of their uh, statistics. But until you're tested, you can't prove it. Can't prove it, man. I'm, I'm a big data guy myself, Richard, man, and I, I'm with you on that. I don't think that uh, we're getting all the accurate numbers. I think this thing is a is potentially a bigger situation than we're aware of now, right are now. You, you're in Virginia? Yeah, so, yeah, I'm in Richmond, Virginia. And uh, so we buy property here in Richmond uh, throughout Virginia, central Virginia. Uh, then we're buying a lot out in Raleigh, Greensboro, uh, Winston-Salem, and kind of on the outskirts of Charlotte. Um, so Ann is somebody that works with us in our office down there in Raleigh and uh, touched base with me on this one and uh, kind of gave me some some information and looked like something we're definitely interested in. So I want to kind of just jump on the line with you and uh, just talk to you straight, man, see if it's something we could figure out and make happen. Um, tell me a little bit, I guess, when was the last time that you've, uh, you know, been in the property and is it currently vacant? Uh, three months ago, is it down there? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's, it's semi vacant. Uh, a buddy of mine lives down there, and uh, he's he's got, he had a job right outside of Raleigh, and so he was living there. But then he took a job uh, as a CFO in, in Wilmington. Gotcha. So um, his kids, his two adult kids, live in Raleigh. So he goes up to Raleigh and stays at the house whenever he wants, and, and you know, sees his kids on the weekends, whatever. I got you. Well, well that being otherwise, said, otherwise, send me vacant. I got you. I got you. Well, let me ask you this, man. That being said, uh, I mean, what's your timeline as far as, you know, looking to sell? Well, um, I, I didn't, I put it up for sale and all I got was flippers that were just willing to, you know, give me 50 cents, 60 cents on the dock. Sure. So I just said, forget it. I won't sell it. And, uh, uh, it doesn't really cost me that much. Uh, Taxes, monthly taxes are about uh, 100, 100 bucks, hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, and North Carolina doesn't. Uh, they don't beat you up too bad on the taxes. Uh, well, Richard, let me ask yeah, you this, man. Yeah, not like New Jersey. Not yeah, I know it's rough up there, man. It is. Uh, so let me ask you this, Richard. So uh, you know, we do a couple different things. We flip properties and uh, we rent properties as well. Uh, it just depends on the deal, what the numbers look like. Like I said, I'm I'm strictly kind of a data guy. Uh, so if something works as a rental property, uh, then we, and it's got some room for appreciation down the road, uh, we kind of look at it from that, that perspective. Uh, so I know you've talked to some, some flippers and that kind of hasn't worked out for you. I'm really kind of interested in this one as a, as a rental property. Um, I mean, you know, what do you, what do you feel that it's, uh, what do you feel that it's worth, I guess, in the condition it's in right now? Well, I was looking to get 140 for it. Um, uh, gotcha. But, uh, yeah, and uh, I I wasn't getting anywhere near. It. I was getting one twenty. One twenty was nice. I ever got. Gotcha. So, um, I just there. I just keep it. And, uh, I go down there. And, I mean, it needs work. It, you know, if you're gonna try to, you know, if you're gonna turn it into a rental property, it, uh, if you guys, if you have a crew that you go and do a bunch of houses, yeah, it might only be it might only be you know ten thousand dollars in equipment. Uh, materials and, you know, it's, it's all labor you know well let me ask you a question uh and and kind of peeked around and, and i've kind of seen some pictures on the outside i mean what would you say is kind of the scope of, of what's needed on it you know in terms of the repairs well, to get it one, to get in the rental one condition bathroom, the one bath, yeah the one bathroom downstairs uh, needs to be totally gutted got it um it, it sustained water damage and uh it's just you know in bad shape um and uh, it's from 1982, so it's the original, you know, it's all cheap uh, uh, article board cabinet. And, uh, the tile, the tiled uh, uh, shower is in, in perfect shape. It's in great shape. Okay. Um, but the, you know, the, the uh, wall. And Guys, I'm lining the them up to tell me about the repairs, all right, the, uh, so that I can work them down later on the purchase price. Sink cabinet, you know, right? He said 120 is the highest offer he's got. Uh, the back door downstairs um, uh, should be uh, fixed and 
terms of uh, uh, one of the tenants put in a, a French door. Ah, okay. Those are good. Those are good tenants, man. I like those kind of tenants. Yeah, oh, great tenants. Yeah, great tenants. If you didn't know what the hell it was doing, you could flash it right. Ah, uh, I got gotcha. you. Water getting in. This is on the middle. Yeah, this is on the middle floor. Middle floor, and so the water got in on on the bottom floor and, and all around the door. Gotcha. So, um, the ceiling and the wall, and and uh, the whole house has a uh, popcorn ceiling. Everybody tells me, I got to get rid of that. I got to get rid of that. Nobody likes popcorn ceiling anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and, man. Uh, um, so it's kind of that that classic nineteen eighties builder grade, kind of kind of house, so to speak, right? Yeah. What it, the cheapest cheapest possible one I could buy when I was going to college. I was going oh to college. man, that's uh, I, I like to hear that, man. See, to buy that than it was to rent. Really? Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, salute to you, man, for for having the foresight to buy a house while you were in college, and uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm guessing uh, it worked out. Worked I mean, I rented it for 20 years, 20, 25 years. Yeah, I mean, I see that it was built in 82. So, I mean, what's that? That's what, uh, 37 years, I think? Yeah, I, I lived there for six. And then I rented it for like 25. I got you. And then the last three or four years, it's been pretty much uh, just semi-vacant. Well, well, Richard, let me ask you a quick question, man. Um, it needs, you know, it needs other stuff, too. I mean, if you're going to rent it, it needs uh, appliances in the kitchen. Okay. It needs some work in the kitchen in terms of uh, uh, just putting everything back together. Um, it needs carpets, basically throughout. Um, yeah, what else? Um, that's about it. I mean, it was painted not too long ago. Painted like four years ago. And nobody lived there, so I mean, the painting, painting's not too bad. It doesn't look too bad. Um, but, oh, well, you know, uh, beige neutral colors type deal. Uh, you know, I don't. I mean, I don't think that that the biggest issue is the bathroom and the ceiling, the basement. Got you from that uh, from that water coming in. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the bathroom upstairs, the half bath that was upstairs on the middle floor. Mm -hmm. Um, it had a leak. It, it had it sustained a leaky toilet valve, and that that's the water that dripped down and and. Uh, Damaged the bathroom down below. So, gotcha. Um, yeah. Now that, that makes sense. So, I mean, let me ask you that. I mean, all that being said, I mean, have you priced out what it would cost to, to fix it up at all or, or anything like that? Well, um, like I said, I mean, if I, if I pay somebody, you know, it seems like Raleigh, you can't even find anybody that's defendable and, and they're going to gouge you for every single time they, they get because the work is so prevalent. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of people come in and give me prices, and then I agreed to one of them and never saw them again. Oh, and really? Like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, that's the, I guess that's the the work ethic in in uh, Raleigh now. Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, but, uh, well, that's why you're. Yeah, uh, it's just the guy just goes, "Hell, I can go do another job, for more, you know, make more money." So I'm not going to do your job. But then he gives you a call and tell you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So this guy's and the so talker, now, so you got to constantly try to redirect him back to where you're supposed to be at. You know, and, you call them and call them and call them and you get no response. And then what are you supposed to do? Right. You know? Yeah, I'm with you. You're kind, well, of, you're kind of you're kind of stuck. Well, Richard, let me address that for you, man. I mean, it's paid for. It's paid for, and so I, I'm just I'm gonna just plan on coming down here and start doing some work myself. Bring bring some you know buddies that I know up here, crew crew guys from up here. Um, like right in New Jersey now, you're not allowed to you're not allowed to do it. Right. Right. Um, they, they've shut down all construction, um, no matter what it is. I'm uh, with you. Like the hospital or public works or something like that. Yeah, they, they let that go. But everything else is pretty much because of the coronavirus. They pretty much shut down. And so, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's tough saying, getting. Uh, yeah. It's tough getting stuff done. But Richard, so, let me ask. You, let me ask you this, man. Yeah. Um, you know, look, I, I'm a man of my word. I, I don't want to make a commitment to you that I can't honor. Uh, you know, the way things work for me, man, I like to do easy, simple business. I'm a simple country guy, man. I'm originally from South Carolina. And uh, so we like to do things kind of simple and easy down there. So uh, what would work for me is, you know, trying to get an offer together with you, see if it's a win-win situation. I want it to be something that's mutually beneficial. You know, obviously, if it's not, it's not. Uh, we buy about five to 10 properties a month. 
Uh, and you know, I've been in business a little over 10 years, man. So one thing I know is uh, if something doesn't make sense, it just doesn't make sense. But, um, you know, I can get something done for you within uh, the next 30 days, uh, you know, possibly within the next 20 days, but 30 days to call it safe. If I can do something sooner, I absolutely would do that for you. Uh, but what I think that we could do is, uh, you know, try to get a number here done. Um, I'm kind of sitting at 130. I know you're at 140. You know you had an offer at 120. Um, able to do 130, kind of take care of the closing well, costs. I actually, I, actually had a, I actually had an offer at 140, I don't know, a year ago. But he wanted basically to uh, have an owner finance for five years. And I, I said, no, I can't do that. If yeah. you put 30% down, I'd be, I, you know, if you put 30, 40% down, I, I would owner finance it. You know, but... Uh, hundred percent owner finance because I, I know. So I now I'm about to hit him with a little flex because he's talking about owner financing. So we're going to press him about buying and cash. Turn into a That's rent. Twelve hundred, thirteen hundred a month, and you were only willing to pay me eight hundred a month. Ah, uh, yeah. Five years. Yeah, so owner, owner finance is not a bad model, but that, that's not what I'm looking to do here. We, I've got some cash uh, that's sitting that I've kind of got earmarked for some deals in North Carolina that we're, that we're trying to pick up. Uh, that I've got uh, some access on my credit line. Uh, so your, your property is one of the five that kind of that we're taking a look at. Uh, yours is at the top of my list, and I've got uh, another two that are kind of right behind it. Uh, so I'd like to work something out on this. And just to, again, just to, Richard, to be straightforward with you, you know, it's built in the 80s, uh, so it's not a super old house. Some of the ones that I'm looking at are a little bit older, uh, and they're going to require a little bit more heavy lifting in terms of work. And uh, like I said, man, what I'm looking right. for right now, and Raleigh area is, is primarily kind of just rental property, um, you know. So I'm not sure what what made you not take that offer at 140. By the way, just curious. Uh, because of the owner finance and knocking down all my joints. I mean, he he, he basically wanted to give me uh, 800 a month uh, for five years, and then have a balloon payment at the end of five years. Oh, I got you. He's trying to do a five year uh, balloon note. At zero, it was at zero in. It was at zero interest rate. He didn't want to, he didn't want to pay any interest. Well, I like, I like those seller financing opportunities. Oh, yeah, that would be, I mean, yeah, yeah, that, that'd be crazy. We've got a couple of those, man. Those aren't bad. Those aren't bad. Yeah, well, let me ask you this, man. I'm with you. So, Richard, I mean, I'd like to try to do something for you, man. I could get it done, like I said, within a month. I mean, all things considered with the work, you know, kind of getting mobilized and having to get that done, state of the economy, um, I mean, what's the number that you could walk with and, and, and feel comfortable and okay with? And, uh, you know, we can make it something that works for both of us. I know I'm at, you know, 130, you're at 140. Is there something we can kind of make work here to get this done? I, and I, and I, look, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm trying to put something on paper with you. Um, you know, we do our contracts elect electronically, or we can send a notary out to you, whatever's preferred for you. And, uh, well, that might be harder these days, so electronic is probably best. Uh, but we use an online notary system as well. And, uh, you know, what I'd be looking at doing is trying to get escrow opened on it. How that works is uh, you and I would kind of just, you know, we, we put an agreement together. It's a very kind of simple agreement. Uh, I'd email it over to you. I'd go over it with you by phone. And, uh, you know, once we sign off on that, next business day, we'd get it over in the escrow, uh, put the deposit up with our attorney, and then we would start working through that title process. And uh, like I said, generally, uh, we can get things done within two weeks. Right now, with everything just kind of going on with the court system and kind of things kind of running on a lag in terms of closings, we are running into some delays. Oh, yeah, so I just want to be straightforward with you about that up front so that you're aware of it. But uh, we, can, we can definitely kind of keep a commitment and make something happen within 30 days. The way that I do business, Richard, if anything changes, if there's any problems that we ever run into, I'm going to be the first person to pick the phone up and give you a call and let you know about it. I don't foresee anything like that happening. Like I said, we've got cash sitting and available. Um, I mean, what's a number that you could kind of wrap your head around and uh, it makes sense for the both of us? Right. Well, I mean, uh, I came up with that number almost a year ago. So, so guys, I'm looking, 140 is a really good deal. All right. Whoever's got this lead, I'm seeing two comps within a quarter mile. Uh, one for 242, one for 227, and a third one for 280. So this is some money on deck. You know, I, I paid for it. It's not like I said, it's not costing me, but uh, $110 a month. So, I got you. Um, you know, I got so, you. Know, if I don't sell it for $140, I'll, I'll, you know, and the biggest mistake I made, too, is I didn't go to a realtor. I mean, I, I'm being told So now, look, guys, I already set them up. So what I told them is I got some money earmarked, and I, I got to be able to buy a couple of properties this month. 
So now I'm going to price them down at the 140 and try to try to break them down to kind of make sure that we get this thing done ASAP. It, it was as if there's a network of flippers out there that all work. Somebody together. might have to let they me fund this deal for them, man. They all pass it on to each other. Go, oh, Chris. Let's go. I tried this routine with them and it didn't work. Try it in a routine, yeah. I got you. And they all came back down to, to the same price. I'm like, you know, I can give you, you know, I can give you 116 for it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, what? that's strange in Alaska. And, and I, I, I kind of confirmed it because I would get phone calls and I'd, I'd put their names in, the, in my phone. Right? And two weeks later, I get a phone call and, and it'd be Joe. And I said, why did he come up as Amy on my phone? Why <laughs> right. did he come up as Chris? Why did he come, you know, it, it's like, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of. I think I'm just going to hold on to it and uh, fix it up and sell it. Well, Richard, Richard, let me ask you. Like Raleigh just keeps going up. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad, man. But let me ask you this, man. You 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 don't want to drive all the way down 95 to get to, to Raleigh to deal with this thing. I like your style, man. I like I like, I know you don't, man. They won't even let us outside made, right now. I have, made, I, have, I have made that drive. <laughs> I believe you too, man. I know you made it a bunch of times. I went to undergrad. I went to undergrad down near Charlotte. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Graduate school at NC State. So that, that drive, I drive, I could do that in my sleep. So you, you're from Jersey uh, originally, then? I'm originally from Jersey, you know. I got I you. And I didn't stay down south, so I'm not a damn Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look, let me ask you this, man. I mean, if, if I can, here's, here's my problem. Here's kind of the dilemma I got. Uh, you know, I've got a credit line that's open. I've got a few properties that I'm looking at. Like I said, I buy about five to ten a month. My issue right now, man, if I'm being straightforward with you, is I'm trying to get some capital deployed uh, into the market uh, before, you know, the credit and, and the market kind of gets tightened up too much with the banks. Um, you know, I, I went through 08, man, so I know what that's like. You know, my thing is I've got access to some cash right now. I want to go ahead and get it kind of out on the street uh, so that it's working for me here. We believe in the market personally here in my office long term. Uh, you know, this is what I've been doing for a long time, man. I'm committed to the business. Uh, so I kind of really just want to get it out there. Um, if I'm able to come up to the 140, take care of all the expenses, still willing to do that. Um, is this something that we could, you'd be willing to get on paper so I can kind of earmark some money towards this and it's something that we can make happen and get done. I'll make it a hassle-free kind of situation for you. And you and I will kind of deal with each other directly. Like I said, Ann's on my team uh, and she'll be in to step in and assist uh, with certain things that are needed in terms of maybe getting over to price out construction, things of that nature. Uh, but all in all, um, you know, I'd like to, like I said, you're probably at the top of my list, man. I'd, I'd like to kind of earmark some cash okay. toward it and try to make it work. And uh, like I said, I, I do business uh, based on win-win situations. So um, I, I'm willing to come up uh, to that 140 uh, if it's something that we can kind of get on paper. And that way I can kind of lock, uh, lock some money in against it and know that it's uh, taken care of. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I, if you get up to one, 140. That's how you press um, them down. Uh, yeah, I, I would. Got to set them up for the knockout punch. Pay all other expenses. I don't want to get any, with the attorney's fees, I don't want to get hit with any kind of closing costs. I don't want to get hit with any kind of, you know, title searches or, or, uh, real fees or. Holding yeah, fees. no, there's no, uh, no commissions. 140, that's it. Yeah, so there's no commissions. Uh, the, only, the only thing I won't pay, all right, is if there's back taxes or any type of liens or anything like that. I don't think that's the case, man. You've owned this thing okay. for a long time, but um, that, that's the only thing that we won't pay. But yeah, I, I do owe. I do now. I do owe my taxes from last year. Man. Well, hundred dollars. Nah, hey, hey, Richard. I, I tell you what, man. I, I got a big. I've got a pretty decent sized portfolio, and uh, we we kind of lag behind on paying our taxes too. So, I, ironically, man, I get some of these phone calls that, like that you're getting sometimes because uh i end up on the tax delinquent list uh every once in a while man because we got to right. crack a big nugget to the city right. man to pay those taxes um but ta taxes man that's a whole another conversation um but but here, here's how that works for us man let me get an email from you um and what i can do uh, you got computer access by chance right now yeah I sure do all right what's right your, now all right cool man what's your email richard uh richard dot lodge at gmail.com. All right, keep it easy, man. Keep it easy. All right, let me get. Uh, I'm gonna put you on a brief hold if that's all right. Give me about one or one minute or so. I'm gonna put you on a brief hold. What I'm gonna do, Richard, 
Uh, I'm going to send you a contract over. It's going to come from uh, DocuSign. I don't know if you're familiar with DocuSign or not. No, but go ahead. All right, it's an electronic uh, signature tool, so it'll come into your email inbox. All you got to do is click to open it. It'll bring the document up for you, and then we'll just kind of quickly kind of go over the document. Any questions you got, I'm happy to answer it to you and be transparent, tell you anything that you need me to tell you. And uh, let's see if we can try to make this uh, make this happen. All right, man. Give me uh, yeah, give me one second. Let me get that uh, put in the system here for you real quick, and I'll be right back with you. All right, Richard. All right. Keith, what up, man? <laughs> What's going on with it, man? It's LeBron, man. You already know what time it is, man. Hey, man, I'm like I'm I'm like cold, man. I'm like cold. I love it, man. I love it. I love you know what it. I'm saying. Let's you know, it, what, what, and, and, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I got and that on what I said. I got respect for y'all because I'm gonna say this. A lot of these people that's on here right now, they they hard earn money all the time to come support us, and we showing them that we about what we say we about, and that's yeah. all that matter. They yeah, deserve that. Really these it. people deserve that much. Yeah, man. We they really deserve. That's we really do, man. We're not telling y'all nothing. We don't actually do ourselves, guys. Yep. Yep. You can't tell me nothing bad about these guys. I don't care what they say. I'm riding with y'all walking the ride. These guys are willing to show y'all this is exactly what they do. And I feel like that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I feel like that's missing the game right now. We de we deserve to show y'all. Y'all y'all coming to support us, but we we should be able to show y'all this is what we do and this is what everybody's doing tonight. That's what everybody's doing tonight. All right, let me go back to him real quick. Hey, Richard, and what I want to do, man, is as I'm plugging kind of this information in the system, I'm just going to – got to what to do, you, baby. So that we're on the same page and, uh, you know, we, we're, we got everything kind of figured out. So here's what we're going to do, man. We're going to do uh, – and I don't think I mentioned this earlier, so I apologize, but uh, we buy as is, where is. So I'm not asking you – it's not like a realtor transaction where I'm going to slide back to you and ask you to make uh, changes to the property or tell you that I'm not buying it unless you do this or do that. Um, you know, I take you already, take you as a man of your word, man, and I appreciate you taking the time tonight to kind of describe the property to me, uh, kind of let me know what's going on. And um, from what Ann's told me, from kind of peeking around in the windows and, uh, you know, sending me, uh, sending me some pictures of the exterior, like I said, man, we feel pretty good about it. Uh, so I'm going to shoot this over to your, uh, your email here in one second. Um, let me give you, uh, let me give you my, my email as well. So you have it. Because, like I said, this is going to come from DocuSign, so I just want to make sure you got my information as well. All right. Um, I'll just have to wait for your email. Can, uh, you can't put it in your pension. No, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it right there on the. I'll put it right there on the document for you, man. It's not a problem. All right. That's good. Not a problem at all, yeah, man. I'm, I'm actually... So when do you, when do you think this all is, is going to end, man? So, so guys, I'm filling the paperwork out. I'm going to keep them talking while I'm getting the paperwork done. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a scientist or as a uh, individual? Oh, you're a scientist, man. All right, so you got to shoot it to me straight then, Richard, man. <laughs> uh, I'm still going to give you my money now, but you got you to shoot it to me straight, people, man. Avoid contact. They don't like seize in their hand and then grab things. And, and, you know, all these little things all add up. And, uh, everybody who thinks that they're immune to it, they're not. Um, this could, this could go till August or September. Yeah. And they're talking about. They're talking about. They're, they're talking about that you could, we could get a second wave that could become seasonal, just like the flu. Oh wow. Which is seasonal. You know, and and the killer is the flu. The flu kills more people. Right. Okay. And the flu, I, I, mean, you know, I don't know, it was like 60,000, I think, last year for, for the United States. But it's a lot smaller percentage. In New Jersey, it's about a 3% death rate of people that catch the, the virus. Whereas the flu, it's like 0.1%. 2%. So this coronavirus is... is 30, you know, 25, 30 times more deadly than the flu. 
and um, nobody takes the flu seriously. You know right. I mean, it's like you get the flu, big deal. You know, it's, you know you, all right, first you get a flu shot, so that lessens the, uh, the flu when you catch it, and then once you catch it, then you, you know, take some, you know, Tylenol or, or uh, ibuprofen or, or, or you can ask or whatever. You know, they give you all kinds of shit nowadays. You know. Yeah. You take back. Illnesses. Situations. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're obese, you got diabetes, um, you got lung problems, like you smoke, or you, or if you, if you use the jewel, you know, anything that's oh, yeah. your respiratory. And now they're finding that, now they're finding that, uh, and this is, this is mind body, but uh, they're finding that people that in, get incubated, where they, they shove this tube down your throat and they put it into your lung. Well, yeah. And a machine basically breathes for you. Man. They're finding that it increases the death rate. Like, if, if you get to the point where they have to put an anchor bay on you, in, in New York, they, you know, they, they're having like an 80% death rate. Once you're on a ventilator system? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy. And then, you know, then you have all these other places that are trying these different drugs that are trying to and malaria drugs, all kinds of stuff. It's in New Jersey, I'm not kidding you. All the drug companies are working on vaccines and testing systems and, and you know, trying to that figure it out. Issue with the test. Yeah, the testing the testing, you got people that have been in the hospital for a week and they still haven't gotten their test results back. Yeah, I mean that's no good, man. I mean that yeah, I mean, that, that's what's putting people down and, and getting people in a spot where they can't uh, – I mean, they're not giving people a fighting chance, man, when you put them in that situation. So, um, that's uh, that, that's tough, man. Uh, and then, you know, the kicker, too, is that, you know, the first three to five days that you have – Like I said, he's a talker, man, so I got I to gotta redirect them back, trying to get them to the contract. You might not have any symptoms, but you're infected, and you're infecting other people. Right, and that's, that's the issue, man. That's the uh, – that's the problem, man. So that's that's what causes that that spread. But but hopefully we get to a spot, man, where we we kind of get a hammer on this thing and uh, get back to normal. As as a company, we're banking towards. I've got all my employees working virtual right now, uh, so we're working towards August, yeah, July, that's August how, as well. That's how all, all of our we're all virtual. virtual. Yeah, you can only really do that for so long. You know, right? Like, uh, the company I work for, um, they they uh, manufacture equipment for pharmaceutical companies production line and uh, so we send out field service engineers all over the world literally all over the world and uh, oh, we can't do that now we're all they're all sitting at home uh, doing training and, and doing nothing basically you, know, you can't lay them off because you spent you might have spent two years training one of these engineers to work on your equipment you can't turn around and fire them and lay them off you know because when this thing goes goes bye bye, you know, who's gonna replace that guy? Oh yeah. You laid him off. You think he's gonna want to, you think he's gonna want to come back and work for you? <laughs> nah, I don't worry like that, man. He's gonna be he's gonna be looking somewhere else where he feels valued. Hey look, uh if, if you look at your email for me, Richard, um you should have an email from DocuSign. Uh says that it's coming from, from Ridge Point Holdings. And uh if you pull that up I can go over it with you here and uh make sure we got everything here on the same page. Let me get off my phone. All right. Uh, it's not letting you. Yeah. Back and watch. All right, pull it up, Richard. I'll, I'll call you back in a few minutes, and uh, we'll, we'll get this thing hammered out, man. We'll answer any questions, and uh, we'll get it done, all right? All right, sounds good. All right, boss, I'll talk to you in a few minutes. We need all that. Hey, man. We need all that. Hey Thank man, you. shout out to shout out to everybody, man. Everybody been doing their thing tonight, man. Shout out to everybody. Absolutely, man. I love I'm gonna, it. I'm I love gonna, it. I'm gonna let y'all get a feedback, man. Y'all go ahead and do y'all thing, man. So so I love I love the fact that the way the, so so you already knew, and this is the importance, y'all, of 
of studying the craft and studying the business, right? So, so Chris knew what his numbers were and he knew how he could pivot based on what the seller needed. So, th so that's my feedback. I love the way that you were able to pivot. You already had the rapport. You already knew you had them in the palm of, of, of your hand so that you could make it happen, Chris. So that goes into the, the, the question. And that's how are you going to work this deal? Because that's what some of the people are, are wondering right now. No question, man. No question. That was fire. That was fire. So that guys, was a, no, but that was a question though. That was a question from, from some in the in the audience, Chris. That that how are you gonna work that deal? Yeah, so look, let me tell you guys how I was looking at that deal. Let me uh see if I can share my screen real quick. Real fast too, Chris, before you get into that. Yeah, um, yeah. I got a homie that's gonna be joining here that's gonna be giving something away to the audience. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. Well we could do that and then I can uh call them back real quick. Okay. All right, guys, so it won't let me uh hold on a second. All right, so can you guys see my, my prop stream right here? Yep. All right, so this is kind of a simple way to look at a deal like this, right? So I can already pull this up in prop stream. Let me get back in here and see some pictures of it. Somebody give me that address again, man. Oh, here it is right here. Never mind. All right, so when I pull it up, I can get an idea of exactly what the property looks like. All right, so I've been doing this a long time, man. So I can see he's got replacement windows on the property already. It's got vinyl siding. He's got a brick veneer on the foundation, all right? I can look out the back. I see the French door that he's talking about. What he's talking about is that his tenant at the time put in the French doors, all right? And uh, water is getting in right here because it wasn't properly flashed correctly, okay? It's got a nice deck on it. Um, it's got an HVAC that I see right here. All right, so I know that it's probably got an upgraded panel given the fact that it was built in the 80s. Um, so I know it's pretty solid. Quick look on the inside, it's kind of builder grade, just like he said. Um, so I can look here quickly through the pictures, see that it's more of a cosmetic type of renovation. So that's that water damage that he talked about. Uh, right here, I can see, all right, he just opened the contract. So let's see if we can get this thing knocked out. Uh, this is probably that bathroom that he spoke of that was in. Uh, bad condition and that needed to be gutted. All right, guys. So this is why I do, I don't, I don't use a 70% rule and da, 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 I do things a little bit differently. All right. So uh, I'm going to pull up the MLS comps. And I'll show you guys exactly how I look at a deal like this. All right. So I'm going to cut it down to a quarter mile. I always do that first. Property is 1200 square feet. All right. So I'm going to say 1100 up to 1500 for the sake of this. All right, so look guys, I got a lead right here that went for 130. I got one right here that went for 242, 227. Now these are gonna be houses, uh, these two leads right here, or these two, um, these two items right here. All right, so something like this is something that you can get into. Somebody's gonna buy this potentially for cash flow. Uh, could be an opportunity for them, but we know that it's in an area if we look at this on a tight level, so something like this, it's really kind of a basic builder grade, 1300 square feet within a quarter mile. This one went for 242, all right? Uh, and that sold back in August. Then you got this one that went for 227. So again, it's in better condition, it's updated. Um, so for me, that shows me that there's some room here somewhere. Uh, I don't know what you guys think, but that's how I look at a deal like that for sure. And one, one other thing real quick, something else that he's already told us is that he's open to uh, seller financing, all right? Um, so he already said he's open to seller financing, it just has to be at the right term. So one thing that I know is uh, this is something that could always be converted into a nice seller financing opportunity, and uh, I can get the ball rolling with the guy and get something done. Fire. Fire. Come on, guys. You guys getting value from that? Throw value in the comments. I want to see this. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so guys, I brought in a good friend of mine. He's a really good friend of mine. He actually was one of the first people to, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, sign up as a vendor for one of our events that we had through called ground zero. It was my first real estate function. Aaron, uh, Aaron's been a part of uh, almost every real estate event that I've done. And, uh, this one right here was a big deal cause it was a three day thing. And my buddy Ryan brought massive value to the table, guys. So we were going to do this, right? We set this up last week. We're going to do something way different, okay? 
we were going to just straight up give away a thousand pieces of mail. I think that was it to one person. But you know what? I told him, I was like, dude, I, I got on the phone with Ryan. I said, yo, Ryan, these guys, they really showed up. Not just my panelists, but the damn people that are in this chat room showed up. So with that being said, man, I had to kill, uh, you know, uh, I had to kill a squirrel and beat up an old lady with a stick to convince Ryan that this is something that he should have done. And what he's going to do for you guys is give you all 20% off of your next direct mail or uh, your, your next direct mail order through his company. So everybody here gets 20% off, guys. That's insane, man. Dang. So Ryan, you want to give him a little bit about who you are, what you do, give a quick introduction. I'm going to pin you to the... To the to the front real quick so everybody can see you absolutely can you hear me good yes i can hear you awesome well, what's up guys thanks for having me ryan with reiprintmail.com here and um so who i am um i am a direct uh, marketing partner um with uh, some of the greats in the industry and basically we're a 27 year old company and um, we are uh, killing the game because we have um, a lot of the best technology. So we invented the Street View Mailer. A lot of people use it, put, putting a picture of uh, the property on a postcard or a letter. Uh, but then as well, uh, we invented a reverse texting technology that allows you to capture your prospect's cell phone number. Basically, we put it on any mail piece. Um, and let's say it says, is this your property? I want to buy it. Text A, B, C, D to one, two, three, four, um, and, uh, to get an instant, uh, cash offer. And so as soon as they do that, two things happen. One, uh, the, the prospect gets, um, a personalized text message from you introducing yourself and giving them your uh, cell phone number, um, and just a, kind of starting the closing. Um, and then you, the investor, get an email with their first name, last name, property address, mailing address, and cell phone number that you just captured. And it happens all in one neat record that can be automatically integrated into your CRM, and I can help with that. Um, so that's, that's one of the coolest new technologies that we came out with. Um, but we're just innovative. We've been doing this a long time. We're partners with the best because uh, we have the most innovative mail. Um, and can I go ahead and share my screen here and I'll show you the piece I want to uh, turn everybody on to? Let's get it. Let's go. Let's do that. Guys, this piece right here that he's about to show, uh, I'm going to guess and do just so everybody understands this. Everybody right now is expecting a check from the government. Okay. Everybody is expecting a check. This piece of mail that Ryan's about to show you guys right now is very expensive and they're about to give it to you guys at a discount and I guarantee you once you see it you're going to be like holy crap how come I've never thought of this so like REI print mail they're very innovative they've been around for 27 plus years and they're they, that they've been in business that long for a reason so be excited about what you guys are about to see all right so can you see my screen good yep I can see it all right um here is of course everybody's expecting jacks we saw an uptick with some of our smaller um, mailings past couple weeks and we saw people start ordering these um, and so we said why and then it hit us well that's why because people are expecting government checks so imagine being able to send your own check um, in a windowed envelope that says pay to the order of so they're definitely going to open it but not only that the value in the check being a uh, if you have the market rate or assessed value um, in your list, we can actually take a percentage of that and put it in the value portion of the check. So now it actually is getting close to what you might actually offer uh, for the property. So then in which case you're going to get phone calls, but uh, you've got to be a good salesperson. The uh, calls are never going to be, oh, that's exactly the price that I want to sell you my property at. You're going to have to talk around that. So it is a very aggressive form right now. Um, but the people that are good at it and that are using it are killing it and they're reordering right now over and over. This is usually about a 90 cent piece. Um, but, you know, with your, with your discount, you can get it anywhere from, you know, uh, 75 cents, something like that, um, uh, or around there for this piece with a, with an, uh, a windowed envelope. So that's really cool. That I am recommending highly right now. Um, a couple other pieces that are working really well. Um, so focus on that one, but then some of our self mailers, this is a piece nobody else has. Um, 
uh, this is a tear out piece. So it's perforated around the house and you tear it out to see a picture of your home. And then as well to get an instant cash offer, text this to that or call. So this has got a huge open rate. Um, and so we've never given a discount on this piece, but your coupon code, which by the way, write this down, is here to help. Uh, here, the number two and help. That is what this group is going to go put into, uh, after you build your order, you go down into the coupon section, you put here to help, and you'll get 20% off of your order. That's not including postage. Uh, we, we don't ever discount postage, but other than that, it's 20% off all printing and services. Um, so as well, let's look at, let me get away here. This is really cool. So this piece, you might recognize as a certain retail online giant. Well, it's not, but it mimics it, right? <laughs> so this is one of the best forming pieces um, right now. The open rate's amazing. The outside, of course, looks like a box um, and amazing cash offer with the check mark. We all know what that looks like. Um, I'm not going to say it out loud because we do have a trademark, so I'm not really allowed to do that. But you get the idea. The, this piece definitely um, gets opened um, and, and is actually um, just as much or a little bit less than the, than the um, uh, fake check maker. So this is a great piece too. Um, besides that, you know, using, an act, using a good uh, postcard um, is incredibly important. And so um, I would say for everybody, um, no matter what, increase your postcard size right now. We are seeing response rates tick up. I don't know what's going on with my screen here. Um, we're seeing response rates tick up all over the uh, country right now. So hopefully everybody is seeing that. Clearly there is opportunity out there. Um, but right now we're seeing, especially if you double the size of your postcard, most people are sending a four by six out there. Guys, right now really think about and consider increasing that postcard size to a medium size. It's like seven cents more, or cents more, even if you're not using me as your mailhouse, then definitely consider using a larger postcard because it's killing it. It's killing it. So if, if that postcard was going to get you, let's say maybe double the phone calls because you doubled the size, now we're seeing that it's getting you triple. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of sellers out there that need to shore up cash. We're seeing land, uh, land mailings are killing it right now we're seeing some 7% and 10% response rate figures out of land. So it's insane. Um, but uh, yeah, besides that, really, really great time to be doing mail. Um, and um, if, if your competition is not marketing, this is a great time to market. So um, yeah, that, that's really those pieces. And, and um, these technologies are, uh, are winning pretty much everywhere across the board with our customers, people that are staying in the game. I appreciate you, Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us real quick, man. So guys, yeah, no problem. And make sure I hear to help. And then as well, are you going to be able to put uh, maybe my information up there? I probably should have had it uh, ready for it. you. Brad. But if you want to, if you want to send out some, uh, my, my uh, phone number and stuff, don't hesitate. I got you boss. Thank you so much, Ryan. Hey, thank you guys. Have a good one. You take care. So guys, right now is the best time to send direct mail. Literally everybody and their mom is home, okay? So, uh, you know, make it a point, make the investment. We've been sending out direct mail to buy subject to properties. I just bought a house and popped a little over 100,000 in equity and we're about to refinance it right now. It's gonna make me about 80K and it came from direct mail, okay? So remember, use your mail houses. These guys are super affordable, super, uh, uh, you know, they, they really care about their client. I work very closely with Ryan. He'll work very closely with you. So. Uh, let's get back onto the session, guys. Let's get it. Hey, quick thing, real quick, fellas. Uh, like what Q talking about as far as the direct mail. Uh, direct mail is working right now. I know last week we got five deals off direct mail. So uh, don't, don't sleep on that, man. You know, everybody's at the house right now. So, you know, I, I'm not just saying this, you know, order a mail campaign and just go crazy with it. Be strategic with it. You know, stack your lists up. And uh, right now, an absentee list, we got five deals off an of absentee list. So that's kind of give y'all a little jewel real quick. You know, everybody who watching, you know what I mean? So 
that's working. Think about it. It's a lot of landlords who tired right now and they can't even get people out. But this won't last forever. So I would tell y'all, man, hit the absentee list because there's people that's tired, man. And we've been, you know, experiencing it all week. So I would definitely advise everybody on that. Let's get it. So, hey, yeah. Hey, real quick update, man. So he, he called me back while we were uh, uh, talking about mail. Um, so he uh, is good, says he wants to sign the contract. Uh, so he's a scientist. So what I know from his personality is he's a analytical type of person, right? Uh, so he wants to connect me with his attorney tomorrow. I don't know who whose lead this is. Uh, so whoever's lead it is, let me know so that I can get with you and uh, we can get it figured out. Um, he said he is okay to sign, but he wants his attorney. Everybody's got an attorney, right? He wants his attorney to take a look at it. So what I explained to him was that uh, I can only hold this money for him until uh, Wednesday morning at the latest. Uh, that I could give him a couple of days. I know the weekend was coming up. You know how hard it is sometimes to get in touch with an attorney, uh, but that I will um, put the money to the side. I kind of use the same strategy as Keith. I frame it a little bit differently. I lean on the fact saying, hey, I have a credit line. Uh, I want to get this money deployed uh, before it's too late, before the restrictions start to happen with banks, yada, yada, yada. So we've agreed to uh, talk between now and Monday or Wednesday to get things locked up. And he sent me an email already um, to confirm he's got my information correct so we can get it taken care of. All right. Fire. So far, Keith's the only one that got a contract. Aaron, you're the runner up, bro. Everybody working, man. Everybody let's working. Let's go. Let's man, go. Let's go. I'm going to tell y'all, man, the guy that I talked to, he was an easygoing seller. You know what I mean? It's important that you understand the personalities, easygoing, emotional analytical and you got a rail seller the guy i had was easy going i had to make sure that he didn't think it was sweet and and a big part of being a great closer is that you may not close it on the first time so just because i got a deal right now this guy was just easy going i just did what i was supposed to do but that don't mean that i'm in no better closer than any, any than anybody else because part of being a great closer is recognizing and having awareness that right now it might not be the time so it's one of this i don't want y'all to get too caught up on somebody just getting a deal like that at the end of the day it's all about the awareness and recognizing that it may take another route for you to be able to get the deal. Yeah, let me chime in on that real quick too, man. Keith and I, like guys have said, we got kind of similar styles to cold calling. One thing you don't want to do when you got a style like mine or Keith's, you got to be aware that your 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 nature is to press, to move stuff forward. Uh, but you can lose a lot of people when you press too much. All right. So uh, even though I'm willing to stand on my rapport with the guy. If he needs to check with his attorney or whatever the case might be, um, I feel like we've got the rapport. Like I, like I said, he's got an analytical mind, so I know I might need to give him a little bit of time uh, to wrap his head around making the decision. He wasn't really a motivated seller. I don't know if anybody really caught that or not, but he wasn't really a motivated seller. He's owned the property for 37 years, which is an extremely long time. He brought the property while he was in college. Um, he wasn't really incentivized to sell it. He talked a lot about taking some contractors down from Jersey, fixing it up himself, yada, yada, yada. So I kind of brought him all the way to the brink of having to make this decision that he didn't anticipate having to make right now today. So instead of pushing him to lose him, uh, just to try to close him today, we don't want to do that. The goal ultimately is just to get deals closed, not to close them the first time you speak to somebody. All right, so we'll just move him down the line. Uh, we'll get him done. Uh, but the, the point, guys, is when you're cold calling, this is why you stack up leads. This is why you follow up properly, because then what will happen is you'll have deals constantly falling in your your, your inbox on a daily basis. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's go. Aaron, you ready, bro? Bro, we ain't here heavy. Superhumans. Where the superhumans at? Show some love. Where the superhumans at? Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Post it in the comments so that so that I, I can feel y'all's energy and reciprocate it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Where, what All are right. we doing? You want me to just pick another one, or you want to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you? Can you? Uh, cause I'm I'm actually looking at it right now. I'm looking at the sheet. Okay. So I, I am looking at. Oh, look at all these superhumans yeah. showing love. All right, let's see. Liquidating. So look what my girl just came and brought in, dog. Homemade, fam. Oh, Dang. Man. Q's, Q's wife is always hooking them up, low-key. I might need to get married, man. 
That's why your boy say fat, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find my wife, man. There you go. Who? Where, where's Key? Where, where's Chris's wife at? Are y'all in the comment section? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> We're about to change lives. We're about to change lives for real, for real. All right, out of state. All right, so so I'm calling number eleven. Her name is Felicia. She is in Petersburg, Virginia. Back to the berg, man. Back to bag that. I'm always I'm always in VA for some reason. I wonder if this is some sort of sign. You won't do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you do it if you do it. He's about seventeen. Out of owner. I mean, out of state owner. All right, bet I'm about to call right now. Can uh Q uh, or or can y'all help me run comps while I'm while I'm talking to the to the person? It's uh it's twenty five uh twenty five eight sixteen not away Ave. I'm calling right now, y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I totally run numbers, but I'm eating a chicken wing. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, Reggie, this is your deal. All right, I'm calling Felicia right now. Chris, this is in your side of town, bro. I would do the comps. Yeah, I got you. What's the uh, what's the address? Man? It's twenty five eight sixteen, not a way Ave. In the comment section, let me know if y'all can if y'all can hear the seller. I want y'all to hear the whole thing. Q, put it in the comments for me, bro. Shit, I don't know the address. It's um two five eight one six. N is in Nancy. O T T O W A Y Av. Out of way Av. Petersburg, VA twenty three eight oh three. Zip code. All right, I'm going to call her back. By the way, those of you that were not tuned in on the last one, that one that we that we got contracted, the um, we called that person at like 9.30 p.m. their time. All right, I'm about to call. I'm calling back. I'm calling Felicia back. All right, I'm calling one more time, y'all. How do y'all get away with calling so late? I think I think uh, I got. Well, let me let me preface this, Matt. Uh, let me preface this. I got I got cussed out. I got cussed out uh, on the first call beforehand. All right, and um, and we don't always call this late because technically you shouldn't. Like we have a policy. You know, I don't have anybody on my team call after nine. However. Uh, I'm, we kind of, we kind of did, we're kind of doing this just to show y'all what can be done. And I think a lot of it is just, con you know, it's just being confident, you know what I mean? Confident people can do and say things that people who hesitate would never be able to get away with. So it was just nonchalant, you know what I mean? Catherine, uh, I'm saying the last, the last time I called uh, on the East Coast, it was, it was 9.30. It was 9.30 p.m. over there. Not this time. Yes, yeah, it's, it's eight thirty over there right now. I don't know, Daniel, of any states that have banned cold calling because of COVID. Just New York, I think. Oh snap! All right, that that's three times. I normally, I know, if if it's a hot lead, I'll normally call three times. Um, what I will do is I'll just send her a quick text, and and Reggie, if you're if you're still in. Um, let's stay in contact about this one because if she texts back, then we can we can work it together regardless. Uh, let me see. Hey Felicia! Exclamation mark. This is Aaron, comma. I was calling 
to follow up about the property there on Nottaway to see if you were still interested in selling because I would love to talk details about moving forward with you. All right, let me just uh, let me just clean up this text. Felicia. Oh, I was calling to follow up with you about the property there on Nottaway. to see if you were still interested in selling because I would love to talk details about moving forward with you. Smiley face emoji. That's exactly how we, how we uh, follow up. Uh, that, that's usually how we would uh, follow up y'all. And, and actually I, I didn't do something I normally have all my people do, um, which is on the third time I would leave the voicemail and I would send the text. So I'm about to do that right now. All right. All right, so I'm about to get the next one. Yo, the next one is VA, yo. Stand up, man. Stand up. That's hilarious. Well, All right. Down, so man. Let me see. Let me see. Um, out of state owner. We got VA all in this thing right now. Yeah. Hey, my my people be showing up for me, man. We stay charged up, man. That's what's up. All right. So so I'm about to I'm about to I'm about to go in, dialing the number now. Yo, there's way too many numbers in this joint. Hey, Reggie, Reggie I need yeah, man. Mary Hamer's number, bro. Send me Mary Hamer's number. I, I, uh, that's way too many numbers in there, bro. I know that's not a cell phone. What yeah, I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in. Holy shit, were those wings amazing, guys. Wow. <laughs> Dang, bro, you finished all of them, Q? Where the meme at, man? Yeah, where the meme my boy, at? My boy tore them things down. He better wash it down with the crown apple, man. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie, bro, I want to call this lead for you, bro. Are you, are you not in? Okay, there you go, Reggie. All right. What we doing, Q? What we doing? What we doing? Let's do it, bro. Let me get hold on. Let me get my let me get my glass. Four nine. Okay, eight zero four. You ready? Let me pour mine up. Let me fill mine up a little bit more. Five. All right, let's get it. Four, let's get it. I'm drinking on this, by the way, too. Six. Oh, that's that Don Julio, no? That's some 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 new somebody put me on. Let's get it. That's that tequila. That's that purple drink. Ah. All right, uh, Mary. Somebody say Q smile. Q, man, he chilling, man. It's the wings, man. Shelby says she got the water glass out. I got you, Shelby. We doing that water. Mm-hmm. We drinking, we drinking when we get home, though. <laughs> got to do a little something, man. Got to do a little something. Got to wind it down, man. All right, I'm calling back again, y'all. Is that is that your Garrett? Is that your Garrett in the comment section queue? I don't know a Garrett. Like, Jewish Garrett? No, Garrett. Yeah, it's my boy. <laughs> What's up, Jewish Garrett? <laughs> All right, I'm going in one more time, y'all. I like that guy's enthusiasm. That's a that's a woman. Oh. Hey, I got I got to call one of my own leads right now for my team, so I'm, I'm gonna put this on mute while you do that. For those of you that don't know, Garrett is an Orthodox Jew, and he he wears the hat and has the curls on the side of his head and everything. Modest Yahoo. <laughs> All 
I called her three times, Reggie. I called her three times. I'm going to go ahead and follow up with her because I, I, I don't want her to think that I'm a weirdo. Do you have a number, another uh, number for her, Reggie? Reggie, Reggie, where you at, bro? Hey, Reggie, um, the, the, the number that you gave me, just so you know, was an Atlanta number, and her number is, is VA, but I guess if she's an out-of-state owner, then. Bro, you ain't down to call a New York lead. I'm about it. Wait, wait, but where in New York? The worst part, bro. Where? I mean, I like, I love how you like there wasn't a designated worst part because all of New York is the worst. <laughs> nah, nah, like if you said, if you said like, if you said like Murder Row in, in, in Brooklyn, that's hey, one thing. I don't see any leads from New York. You guys are hella respectful. I like it. Hold on one second, y'all. I got a guy in here named Larry Pena who owns a property in San Antonio. You want to you want to run it? <laughs> the notes on this is his wife is making him sell three rental properties. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, yeah. Get, give it to me, Q. Okay, Larry Pena. The address. Oh, I'm sorry. The prop. The number is two one zero. 927-4663. The address is 206 Tampa Avenue. All right. And then his name is Larry Pena? Yeah, Larry Pena. I want to make sure I got the right notes for you. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me see. It says the property is a 1-1 one -one on a 7,000 square foot lot. He was asking 65K for this property. All right, let me uh, let me go ahead and just pull it up real quick. Jarrell Keys. Oh, this is Jarrell Keys joint? Yeah. Is Jarrell on this right now? He, I, he should have been, I don't know. We had a little over a hundred people sign up and uh, there's only 90 in here. So if you hear, you dedicated. <clears throat> <laughs> I've always wanted to go to New York, man. I'm telling you. I still ain't been to New York yet, man. I, I really want to go myself, man. Uh, man, New York, beautiful, man. Y'all got been to go this past, man. <laughs> Renee said, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, we, we chilling right now. Yeah, I'm not. I don't plan on going to New York until all of this stuff blows over. Yeah. Q, can you, can you give me numbers on, on 206 Tampa Ave? Because I uh, my prop stream is kind of glitching right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, and make this call right now. Larry Pena. Man, Brandon Jackson said to make a call, and I got y'all flights. It's a small house, bro. It's 700 square feet. It says that it's a one one, but it's a it's a two one. And okay. Efficiency in the back. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's two separate, dude. The lot is huge. There's an efficiency in the back and then a house up front. Looks like the house is vacant. I don't see where you got one one from. All right. And so so there's a, an efficiency in the back. And and is this west side, uh southwest? Let me take a look. Hold up. I, I'm gonna go ahead and call and just if you want to shoot me numbers and details while I'm while I'm in the middle. Let's get it. It's two houses on one lot. Larry Pena. And this is from Jarrell. Let's go, let's go. Two one sold down the street, bro, for one twenty. Okay. Hey, hey, Larry. Hey, this is Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, yes, sir, yes, sir. I, I was calling because you had talked to my partner about your property there on Tampa. Oh, who's your partner? My partner, Jarrell. Okay, okay, what's up? Yes, sir, yes, sir. I was just calling to see if you were still interested in selling it because I, I'm looking to buy it. Okay, okay. Okay. 
My name is Aaron. Uh, it's Aaron. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's E is an echo. A is an apple. R is in Roger. O is in Oscar. N as in Nancy. Bevins. B is in Bravo. E is in Echo. V is in Victor. A is in Apple. N as in Nancy. S as in Sam. Aaron Bevins. Um, my, my phone number here, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the best possible number to, to call me at, um, uh, one second, because I, I just got a new one. Hold on one second. Uh, for, forgive me, forgive me. Hey guys. Hey guys, I don't, whenever people immediately start asking for my information, I don't give them my cell phone number or my business name because I don't know if these are Sue happy people. So You're doing please, the right thing. keep that in mind, y'all. Y yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Aaron, Aaron Bevin. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm giving, I'm going to give you the best number to, to reach out to me at. And, and that number is 210-315-9936. We're, we're talking about the property there on Tampa, uh, seven, uh, two, 206 Tampa. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If you're an investor, mm -hmm. I'm not giving it away. I'm, I'm, I'm using market prices, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I've got half a dozen. Uh, so, so uh-huh. And, man, they're making some good offers because mm. they don't know that, that I'm a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they call me, real estater. The sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. The only one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. There's a there's a couple of different ways that I can I can play the game here. I mean, we we could we could um, utilize it. As Did Aaron just get disconnected? Aaron, no. <laughs> One of y'all should just like screenshot that and then make a bunch of memes out of it. <laughs> I, I can't tell if Aaron's still here. Somebody should Photoshop like a bong. Oh, damn it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, let me get him back in here. Guys, are y'all still here? Chris, Keith? Yeah, I'm in here. I'm in here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Keith, uh, I think Aaron just totally got disconnected. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh... Run it back. We need to run another. Yeah, let me try to get him back in here. Hold up. You try to get him back in real quick. See what the deal is. Break down some uh, some cold call knowledge for everybody on here. So so quick thing, guys. Like uh, you know, I want you guys just to know this, man. You know what I mean? Like the first thing first, man. When it comes to this cold call game, you just gotta make you just gotta make the call, man. Don't make it too difficult. It's important for you to get your reps in. Uh. You know, sales is a contact sport, so it's very, very, very important for you just to get, just to get out there, man. No, man, so what if you make a call and it don't go like it's supposed to? At least you get to learn from that call. You know what I mean? You can make another call. It's too many sellers to call, man. It's too many sellers. But the more support thing is, it's for you to just learn from your calls and you be able to, like, I still listen to my calls to this day. I listen to the team calls. When I get off this call right here, I'm going to put up the team calls and I'm going to listen to what they did today. I just how I go, man. Um, so I, I got, I bought your, uh, your sales course, man, because I, I got to support my brothers, man. Is doing good, positive mm -hmm. things, man. And, uh, giving some gems. If you don't mind, man, uh, in in the first module, going through the whiteboard, what did you say about making the call, man? Just what? 
Make the damn call. It's just just make simple. the damn call, man. Make the damn call, every, man. Every, I find so many people that overcomplicate cold calling. They think it's this extreme, difficult thing. Guys, you're not going to do it perfectly the first time. It's just not going to happen, right? Yeah. You're not going to show up the first time you get on the phone and start calling your list the way that we get on the phones right now. I've been doing this for a really long time. Keith's done over 300 deals. Q's been doing this for a long time. Guys, you, you got to get the reps. You got to get on the phone. You got to get some reps under your belt. You got to self-analyze. You got to listen to your calls, figure out what you did right, what you did wrong. That's how you're going to get better. But you got to do it daily. You keep avoiding the phone, and you're not going to make any money. Man, you know what, Chris? I want to say this, man. I had a PPC lead come in at 1037 last night, and I ended up giving her a call. I just want to see what she's going to answer because she put that she, she wasn't to talk any time. And the call didn't go like I wanted to. And even on that call, I said, you know what, man, what could I have done better? What could I have what 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 could I have done better to make this a better call? So even though that we still actively closing deals, man, I can't imagine how many deals we all closed together. But I still look at myself and say, damn, what could I have done better? Same, it's something I could have done better to keep this lady on the phone, but it didn't happen. So I want you guys to know how that. How long have you owned it? Oh. Ten years. Ten years. Okay. Okay. All right. So so what I'm while while I'm I'm pulling this up here for you, sorry about that. My my internet got disconnected in the middle of our call. Um, so I'm I just want to make sure that I'm I'm pulling up the most accurate information. Uh, let me see here. So let me see. Hold hold on one moment. One moment. Hey Q, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have a we have a number of different a number of different um, exit strategies for properties. Either either um, holding on to them, or or flipping them, and that kind of determines how much we're able to offer whenever we purchase cash. But you're an investor for yourself or for a company? For for myself, and and also I have a network of other investors I work with. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let me know if you're interested in coming back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, do you have a couple more minutes? Because I can give you an offer right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on one second. One second. Uh, let's see. Hey Q, what, what, um, what, what, uh, what are some of the other cash, cash offers in the area? I know this one's going to be different cause there's an efficiency. Yeah, bro. I, I looked all around, man, but you want to stay in your pocket over there across from Baker's and Quintana road. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm only seeing two solds, bro, that are like equivalent to your property that are in that same area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you got one right here, bro. That's probably the only comp that I'll use on the other side of Tampa. I think it is Tampa, two four three Tampa Avenue. It's a two one. Uh, they added on to it though. Yours is a seven hundred square foot property. This one's thirteen hundred. Mm -hmm. It's built the same freaking year and uh, it sold for one hundred and twenty eight. But there's no efficiency in the back. But yeah. uh, your property is hella unique. It's the only one of its kind. I keep going through some of these comps and they just have more bedrooms and bathrooms. So mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that uh, $100,000 for your ARV be a little bit more uh, for the front house mm -hmm. would be a little bit more ideal, but you would have to convert or add on to it to get that value. Almost uh, got it, Mr. Larry. H hold on one moment. I'm, I'm about to give you the numbers right now. But right now, uh, I think I got notes here that the guy's asking for 65 k for this property. Yep. Where you find the value is that there's two houses on it. So you could rent them both. Yeah, what, what, I'm, what I'm thinking, bro, is, is that we um... – if we what, if we were to sell it as a as a as a rental, as is somebody could could be able to because right now he's collecting six fifty on the first one, and then uh, and then two fifty on the back. Mm. So so we could probably sell this thing for for seventy five all day long. What I see in that value with the property is that it's on a giant lot. The lot is huge, bro. It's a double lot, seven thousand square feet. So there should be something that you could do with that. Yeah. Is there any other, is there any other, um, are there any other cash souls in the area that I can hit them with right now? <laughs> There's one that's a little further, bro, that, uh, uh, it, it's, it's in the same area, but it did sell for like 195,000. Okay. But All right. Across cool. the street from Fay Avenue. And it's, uh, it's, I guess, quote unquote, historic district. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Cool. I, I think this guy's already in the price range where, where he needs to be, but I'm going to, I'm going to work on getting them lower. Cause I think that we can sell this one easily for 70, 72, 75. 
Okay, Mr. Larry, um, I, I got some I got some some information. Thank you for your patience, by the way. I, I appreciate it. What what are you what are you doing What are you doing tonight? Are you kind of just relaxing, or or what do you got going on? Well, I've done a, a bunch of little things already, and then I just got to wait a little bit. Okay. Well, I'm cooling off right here. Good, good, good. Okay, same same here. You staying You staying healthy? Been staying at home. <laughs> staying healthy. Staying at home. I hear you. I hear you 100%. Well, hey, I, I, I promised you that, that I was going to do my best to, to make sure that I, I honor, honor, honor you. And, you know, I'm not in the business of lowballing or anything like that. Before I make my offer, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about who I am. That way you, you have an idea um, about who you're doing business with before we do a purchase agreement. Fair enough? So, so um, we work with a, a team of investors. Obviously, I, I have my own company. But um, typically, I don't I don't utilize my own money whenever I purchase these properties. I, I usually usually leverage other people's money. Now, that's not going to impact in any way, shape, or form the the purchase price that you and I negotiate together. So whatever we agree on, that's what you're going to get cash down to the penny. And uh, and just as a courtesy, what we do is we we go ahead and say that we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and pay all. Uh, closing costs for you. So you're not going to have to pay any of that. You won't have to pay any realtor fees, none of that. And, and then we make it typically pretty easy. So with that said, if I can come in at a, at a cash offer, I know you were mentioning that um, you would kind of throw out the, the number 65, but, but if I can pay cash and make this a pretty easy transaction, um, you know, what, what's the best you could do with me if I can close this thing out? You know, let's say if I can bring cash to the table tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um, well, the, so what I'm looking at is in this area, normally we would be at the 45, 50 range. Um, just given the condition and, and what we're looking at. And again, that's cash. And, and that's with us, that's with us being able to close pretty fast and make it convenient. I don't suppose that's something you would consider, would you? Thousand, you know, away from, from what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. So if you would go up a little bit on that, I might consider it, and, and you all can turn it around, add a room to it, and double your money. Okay, okay. All right, I'm kind of making notes here. I'm making notes. Um, I think I think we're we're probably in the same ballpark. What could you What could you work with me at? I, I know you had mentioned sixty five. I, I threw out fifty. Can you work with me at all? If If I'm able to show you proof of funds, show you that we're not we're not here to play around. I want to make this thing. I want to make this thing happen. You know what I mean? Well, if you can make it happen at fifty five, can you? Okay. Well. Well. Let Let me do this. Let me do this. Um. Larry, first of all, I, I know I've already, I called you out of the blue and, and uh, I appreciate your patience with me thus far. Would you mind, Larry, can I call you back in literally two and a half minutes uh, before I make any executive decisions? I, I do have to call my funding partners. Like, like I said, I, I don't use any of my own money. I have, I have funding partners that, that are able to, to, to fund these transactions. Yes, sir. And let me ask you this. If, if I'm able to, to, to make it, I can't make any promises, but if I can, are you willing to do a purchase agreement today? That way we can go ahead and lock it up and send it over to title. Okay. Okay. Um, because I mean, if you, if you were able to, what I could do is send it to your email and then we could, we could pretty much do it there. We could review it together, the purchase agreement and, and go through all the details. Yes, and Tomorrow, I could do whatever you decide to do at that 
but I quoted you, okay? Okay. So let me do this. Let me know. Maybe we'll make it work. Okay. Let me do this. Give me, give me two and a half minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if we can make it work because I don't want to tell you something and then put my foot in my mouth. We don't like doing business that way. So I'll call you right back. And you're, and you're saying that if I can make it happen, that, that you're willing to move forward with me tomorrow? Okay. Give me, give me two and a half minutes exactly, and I'm gonna call you right back saying either yay or nay. Okay. All right, brother. Right. Yes, sir. Come on, yo. What's up, Key? <laughs> What's up, Key? I what see up? you, man. I see you. I see you. What I up? Working, working, working. <laughs> Everybody been working, man. Everybody been working. We all got one, bro. Like, legit. Everybody been working, man. Uh, no, nah, but you know what? I, I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing, but the reality is, you know, you know what? I think everybody did an incredible job in sending very qualified leads y'all sent qualified leads and then and, and so basically y'all threw it towards the hoop and and between Kith, uh keith chris quentin and me we we just know how to dunk we just know how to dunk we've been practicing how to dunk y'all y'all actually threw it towards the hoop and so we were to, uh, we're able to alley oop on on all of these leads for y'all so so basically the the technique that as, so here's the thing, y'all. Here's what I know. In this area um, uh, that where this property is, I know for a fact that um, you can utilize the 1% rule, which means whatever you're getting in rent is, is what uh, people would be able to, to purchase it for. So what I'm trying to do is create the largest spread possible because I already know that I'm still going to have to come off of that price whenever whenever we're selling it right the beautiful thing is that it's already performing right and so with, with that in mind i mean we're we're able to make something happen all right two and a half minutes victoria already told me because she victoria is a superhuman she knows that that i get long-winded so so um i'm gonna call dude back right now Ali, who? Was that two and a half minutes yet? Dang, I should have checked. All right, let me let me just go ahead and call him. Uh, what's his name? Larry? Larry Pena. It blows my mind, man. Like, I don't know. This shit's like breathing. Yep. Got him down ten thousand dollars in like in like four minutes. Come on, y'all. Hey there, Mr. Larry, it's Aaron. Hey, come here. Hey, uh, Mr. Larry, uh, my, my partner said that, that um, we could make it happen at 55 if, if, uh, if you buy us carne guisada tacos uh, on the day of closing. What? If you buy us carne guisada tacos on, on the day of closing that morning. The day of closing, I can choose a place and get some and good gunny and sour tacos. <laughs> hey, 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 and I want and I want Corona, but not the virus. <laughs> corona is the highest uh, uh, beer in the south side, man. I can't handle that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Look, hey, I was I was born on the east side. I was born on the east side in Denver Heights area. So 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 we we do OEs, the forty ounces. Oh man, no no, you're you're high society. This is south side, <laughs> and, and you're not from here. You don't know how to pronounce it. South south side. <laughs> <laughs> no H, right? No H, just just south side. No. <laughs> that's funny that's funny well hey well hey uh thank you for being so straightforward larry I, I like doing business that way um and and um and so what i'm gonna do is how, how do we do this do um if i if i put on a mask and gloves and my you know do we meet in person do you want me to drop it off in front and then and you sign and then i come drive around the block or you know email or how do you want to do it because i want to keep you safe but right uh-huh if i can remember you can Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I like it. What I can do. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, okay? yeah. So do what you can, put it together, and call me, and we can meet. At the very least, we can meet together. Okay, and and and, okay. Let, and let me ask you this: um, Should I should I go to your house, or uh, uh, where do you want me to meet you? All right. Uh, uh, and then what street is that on or, cro or intersection? That way I can. Beautiful, beautiful. But we, we can, okay. we can sign tomorrow and send it to, to title, right? Okay, beautiful, beautiful. I just want to make sure that the way, you know, I'm not wasting your time, you're not wasting mine. But um, okay, okay, Mr. Larry, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow morning with the purchase agreement ready, and then and then we can meet there at the Dairy Queen off Novelitos. Aaron, right? Aaron? Yes, sir. Aaron Bivens? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, thanks for calling, Aaron. My pleasure, talk to you soon. Bye. Southside. No, uh -oh. that's just Southside. You gotta be. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> hey, we do the south side. South side. Hey, hey, hey fellas. Hey, real quick, fellas. Like, <laughs> on a serious note, like, these people don't even know what we got coming next. It's about to be something explosive. Yeah, this is this is nothing. This is nothing. Like, like the next thing that we coming out with, man, it's a different level. And y'all gonna appreciate it on a whole nother level, man. You know, and every every one of these guys is gonna be involved in it, and we gonna we gonna tear it up. Y'all don't even understand what's coming next. It's hey, like, we just say we, screw everybody that committed to being here. That I mean, a lot of you guys, yo, y'all straight up paid for session one. This is me being real, right? And then a lot of y'all straight up bitched about session two. So we gave it to y'all for free, right? And then we did a paid one, second two. We realized that a lot of people that said they were going to show up for session one didn't even show up for session two, all right? And I want to be real with you guys here. If you're here right now, we know that you ride with us, okay? So this right here just shows massive, 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 like, just like, look, man, you bleed, we bleed, we do this thing together, okay? And uh, I'm, I'm, if, you, if I got permission from the other three, I'm down to announce this right now. <laughs> Let's do it, Dang. man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, before you do that, shout out to everybody that paid for both sessions, man. Yeah, man. Big shout out. Y'all are crazy. I love you guys. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. The value is just insane, guys. So uh, my buddy Chris said he's running a hard night, so he has to take off here in a little bit. But we want to make this announcement, guys, and just close this session on a good note. Uh, this was amazing. We had a lot of fun. We wish we could do this all night, guys, but we have families to go home to, right? But – this is something that we've been working on for a long time. It's been happening in the back end. Keith, who's the lineup on this? Who's the lineup right now? Man, listen, man. So what we got going on is we got a cold call Olympics, a cold call tournament, some of the best closers in the country. You got Aaron, you got Q, you got Chris, uh, you got Donnie Ruffin, you got my guy Eliza, you got Steve Morales from the uh, Real Fam. You got Andy and Adrian from the All In uh, Fam. You got my guy Nick from Cali. You got RJ Bates. Uh, who else we got, fellas? We got we got a couple people, man. It's Steve Trang in there. Steve Trang. Steve Trang's Steve gonna train. We got Steve Trang in there. Uh, we tried to get Shark Tino. We're still working on that. But man, it's gonna be a cold call tournament. It's not gonna be like this. It's gonna be an actually point system that's set up, and uh, we all gonna tackle it, man. We all gonna go at it, man. It's gonna be pretty dope. We got guys coming from different brands, different companies. And uh, it's going to be probably the beginning of May. So you think there's something you guys would be interested in? If you're interested, just drop 100 in the comments, man. If that's something you guys want to do. This right here, this is a paid session. But we are going to be donating the money that you are going to be spending to be on this panel. We're going to donate at least $10,000 to a family that has been impacted directly by COVID-19. And we plan on blessing a family. There's going to be a few brackets of giveaways. There's going to be a cash prize for us that are competing. So, I mean, we're also like whoever gets crowned the cold call king at this Olympics event is going to be 100% crowned for an entire year, guys. So ain't nobody going to be able to tell this person anything. He's the best cold caller that's ever existed. We're forward that year. And this is going to be the next time that we do this event. This one's going to be online, right, because of all this crazy shit popping off. This next one that we're going to do is going to be a full-blown event, guys. We're talking about having press conferences. We're talking about having a, a ring that we're going to be cold calling in. 
So guys, you know, uh, if y'all know someone who wants to smoke, you know, bring them. Because I guarantee you guys, we reached out to a lot of these cold call people that, that claim that they're doing a lot of deals, that claim that they have stuff, that didn't want to risk their reputation and lose in this tournament. So to just, us. Like, to us. Aaron, to yeah, us. Hey, man, and, and let me to touch on that, man. Look, guys, I've got a Facebook group. Uh, Aaron's got a group. I know Q's got a group. Uh, Keith's got a huge following on IG. Uh, one of the reasons that we came together and, and, and had the idea to do this, uh, Keith really spearheaded this, uh, you know, the, the webinar that you guys are on, the one that we did on the part one. Uh, it's, it's important, man. It's important for you guys to see uh, people that are really entrenched in this business that are truly uh, doing deals on a daily basis. I've got a real office to run. All these guys have real offices to run. Um, you know, you, you don't got to have 20, 30 employees or anything crazy to be effective. Uh, and you can have 20, 30 employees and be effective. We're, we're trying to show you things from different angles um, to be able to empower you guys uh, to better yourselves, better your family situations. Uh, real estate has been a blessing to me, man, over the last 12 years. I know it's been a blessing to every single one of these guys on this panel. Um, so, you know, our goal is just to give back as much as possible, man, and try to help you guys out. For the people that are wondering what the price point is for this, guys, it's under 100 bucks. We plan on having a few thousand people join this thing. Each individual is going to be having their own following that they're going to be bringing to the table. Multiple styles, guys. So we've already developed a point system on how this is going to be judged. And I'm going to want you guys to be present for this. This is going to be so crazy, man. But we're blowing this thing out of the water. This is going to be an actual event that we're going to be having in 2021. And it's going to be kicking off the year. We're actually going to come together and compete. It's going to be like Mayweather versus Pacquiao versus, you know what I'm saying, Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz. Like, we really going to go at it, you know? So if you see all the trash talk that's happening online, it's because we all know that what, we, what we got and what we bring to the table, man. I tell you right now, yo. So uh, just be super excited about this. This is going to be something that we're going to give back to the community. So you guys got value from this or what? I know y'all. Hey, look, man, if you drop, if you got value tonight, man, drop a one in the comments so we know it's real, y'all. And uh, I see somebody keep putting 2021. No, it's going to be at the beginning of May. So I want y'all to think it's going to be something that's just drawn all the way out. We about to get right to it after this. Uh, we actually having a big meeting tomorrow with all the people that's going to be involved. And we getting straight to it, man. We ain't going to wait too long. Let's go, guys. Yeah. All righty, man. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Guys, we were going, we are going to follow up with you. We got a call and you had a lead and we locked it up for you. Hit us up, okay? But much love, everybody. Y'all have an amazing night, okay? Let's yeah. go. Let's Deuces. Let's get it.